out for the first time. Nothing crazy, guys. It's just bringing you down there. Let the, the fans see you and the cameras. This is the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. It has been a wild day. We've seen different, three different leaders in the 4x4 Pro class. Right now, the uh, leader is Landon Wolf, Brandon Frazier, who led early in this one. Uh, boy, good learning experience for him, but boy, you gotta come and swing 100% when you're going up against a guy like Landon Wolf. So Brandon Frazier currently sitting in the number two spot. White flag came out, he's only 14 seconds back. <laughs> Landon Wolf sealing the deal on the win, so four lap breaks for him. The stage is set and GNCC is about to resume here in wild, wonderful, almost heaven, West Virginia. I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you ready to go? GNCC racing! And row number one, MC1 Pro will be off the road.
as Hunter Hart finds his way into the finish line, Sakanes, and the New Yorker takes the win here at the Mountaineer GNCC. Hunter Hart, you just won GNCC in the overall, dude. Second one's way harder than the first one. Hunter, whatever you did during summer break, keep on doing it, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's it's probably the sheer fact that uh, Devin and Jared and I race wheel to wheel every single every single weekend. You know, I see those two, and, and it wasn't a mystery to me. You know, I, I knew where they were going to be, and uh, I knew if we got together, it'd be be a good day. There you go, there is your winner here, the Mountaineer GNCC, Hunter Hart. It was just a track that you could override real easy and like make mistakes and crash bad. And you know, I just kind of fell into a pace that I knew I could ride and was smooth. Uh, you know, and that's what I told Caitlin this morning and uh, you know, paid off for her and she got the win. And you know, you just, you had to be smooth out there and not make mistakes. And you know, Walker was clicking and he started ripping away from me and I'm like, ah man, I'm just gonna, just gonna run my thing. And then these two guys closed in on me, Devin and, and Hunter, but uh, I just kept running my pace, and next thing you know, he came up on Walker, man. I hope he's all right. He was backwards, getting up off the ground. Hunter actually, I think, talked to him, so I, I assume he was said he was good. Uh, then, you know, it just turned into a battle with Hunter. Like, it was, it was typically like a like a NIO series race, uh, me, him, and Devin, so it was pretty cool. We swapped the lead a few times there, and then, uh, you know, he just had, he had good lines. Uh, he had real good lines. Got me in a mud hole there on the last lap. Same mud hole I passed him on the lap before, so, uh, you know, I was coming into that like, oh, man, I'm just going to stick to the main line I was using. He just pulled one out of nowhere and took it. And Devin Feehan, first, I got to give you a shout. Nick V, our camera guy here, said, dude, I've been seeing what, what Devin Feehan has been doing on Strava all summer. That had to play into today. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to my family. Uh, I couldn't do this without them. Uh, it's been a struggle to get back on the podium for the second time. But, uh, man, I really, really wanted it this uh, these last four rounds. Uh, my goal was fifth today, but to get on the podium is absolutely incredible, and uh, I'm beyond beyond thankful to do it again. So thank you, everybody. Well, big congratulations to you. What kind of confidence does this give you heading into the uh, the last leg of the season here with three rounds left? Yeah, it definitely helps. Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, and, uh, yeah, just keep working hard at it. You earned it today. Make some noise. Third place finisher, Devin Fian. Well, there you have it, folks. Devin Feehan, third place. Hunter Hart taking his second win of his GNCC racing career. Jared McClure taking second. Devin Feehan, third. streaming and the rockets regularly the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the And thanks to our friends at 10 Man Push for that rendition of our nation's anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, as uh, things are certainly uh, getting geared up and warmed up here. 
And ladies and gentlemen, not yet. <laughs> As we welcome folks along the uh, World Wide Web at racertv.com here once again to the uh, Russell Family Farm. And just wrapping up a few moments ago, that uh, morning race program, and uh, it certainly has the uh, stage set for a great race this afternoon. It looks like we're ready to go, my friends, as our next order of business will be to introduce to you our starting lineup for this, the GBC Tires Burr Oak GNCC. Coming to the starting line today in accordance to points to the first 10 rounds of GNCC racing, just like this. Rolling to the light first today, riding aboard the number one as he goes for his seventh GNCC championship and 67 wins to tie Bill Ballas second in the ATV all-time wins list on board the WFR GBC Tires Fly Racing Factory Yamaha, Walker Fowler. Fresh off a win just two weeks ago, riding aboard the number seven from Newfield, New York on a Hunter Hart Racing Max's Fly Racing Yamaha, Hunter Hart. Third in points, riding aboard the number four, fresh from the podium, a second place position just two weeks ago from Casca, Pennsylvania on a JMR TBC Tires Elka backed Honda, the Sneaky Snake, Jared McClure. He is fourth in points. He rides aboard the number three from Edinburgh, Pennsylvania on an action all pro Kenda Tires Teeley Energy Racing Yamaha, the Cole Train, Cole Richardson. Fifth in points, riding aboard the number 712 from Waxhaw, North Carolina on a Pierce Performance Fly Racing GBC Tires back Yamaha, John Galata Jr. Rolling to the line next aboard the 521 out of Waverly, West Virginia. Seventh in points on the Overtires Moose Racing Parts Unlimited. Back ride up the Gator, Adam Miguel. Eighth in points featured on the event t shirt this weekend. Riding aboard that Yamaha backed by Marin Racing, BNR Motorsports, and GBC Tires, JM8, Jared McClure. Riding aboard the number five, he is ninth in points. He hails from Sunbury, Pennsylvania, six-time GNCC champion and the winningest racer of all times on the Chris Boards Racing, GBC Racing, Action Off-Road, back to Suzuki of Chris Boric. The number 406, fresh from the podium two weeks ago from Windsor, New York on a VN Racing, Fly Racing, GBC back, Yamaha, those 9-2 goggles, Devin Vihan. The 701 from Ithaca, New York on a Custom Axis Gold Speed Hauser Racing Yamaha, Greg Covert. To the line next aboard the 703, also featured on the event t-shirt this weekend from Petersburg, Indiana, last year's Pro-Am champion on the Action Off-Road Maxxis Dimery Motorsports Fly Racing Yamaha, Austin Abney. And last and certainly not least in his 27th season as an XC1 Pro, the number 13 from Aurora, Ohio on a GBC Fly Racing HMF Factory Yamaha, Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher. And that, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for this, the GBC Power Sports Tires Burr Oak GNCC as Johnny Gallagher and the rest of our XC1 Pro Class riders make their way to the starting line and pick their final starting line choices. We have but one more order of business before we can get this show on the road. And that is simply, we got to be nice to our DJ, Mr. DJ Judd. If you would, please do us the honor and the favor of remove the meat. The Monster Energy Activation Transport. What we call the meet here at GNCC Racing, now making its way off the starting line, clearing that first turn as Ricky Towery gets ready to take his podium in this orchestra of starts that we get ready to conduct here in just a few moments. Of 
12 of the premier ATV riders in the world are here with us, minus one Bryson Neal, who is here in the facility today, but not on the starting line due to an injury that he sustained here at the John Pinton GNCC in round seven a few months ago. Ended his season, but uh, certainly paved the way for Walker Fowler and a seventh championship as well as the likelihood of setting history here today with a big overall win that would bolster him to second in the points in the standings of most wins and tie him with Bill Balance. One minute, guys. One minute before we're ready to go GNCC racing here in Ohio for the second time in 2021. And of course, all eyes turn to that first turn region where Ricky Towery gets set to signal these riders their next order of business. And it will signal 30 seconds before the start of this race. It will also be a time for a hush to go across this starting line as it is a dead engine call. And we shut them down, guys. Shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. As we are set to go GNCC racing here at the Russell Family Farm. And as things quiet down here, I got to ask you, Ohio race fans, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Come on, guys, I barely heard that. Did you hear me? I said we're in Ohio, the longest standing GNCC on the circuit today. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you ready to go GNCC racing? Seconds. And row number one, the XC1 Pro will be off and rolling at the GBC Tires Oak GNCC. Around that first turn, it is Walker Fowler right behind him, the number three of the Cole Train, Cole Richardson, Jared McClure in tow in third. The XC2 Pro Am, Grayson Eller, Christian Meyer, Garrison Paul, Brandon Owens, Kenny Schick, Albert Jadis, Daniel Peters, Ben Kowalewski, TJ Barrett, Dylan Walraven, Ronnie Rush, Cameron A.B. and Tanner Walker all ready to roll in 10 seconds. Rounding the first turn, look at this. The 246 of Brandon Owens from Walker, West Virginia on the Pirate MX. Moose Racing Impact Solution back ride like a rocket through that first and second turn. He's going to be tough to stop today as we go to the Vet A30 Plus. Jeff Pickens, Brad Whitehead, Dirk DeCesar, James Green, Luke Reeves, Cody Holcomb, Michael Lancaster, and A.J. Coonson. Ten seconds. Big pop, oh, big pop of P gets shut down in that first turn. Jeff Pickett gets shut down, but the number 29 of Brad Whitehead from Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania, ECH, ECS Honda, JMR, and Max is back right, taking the early lead. Senior A40 plus, Shane Ward, Jeremy Gouchard, Brian Foltz, Mark Batts, and Chris Conklin, and Todd Moscala, the Marlboro man, in 10 seconds. Ah, uh, here we go. Around the first turn, it's a drag race to turn two, and it's the 636 of Mark Betts, a former ATV MX out of LaSalle, Michigan, grabbing the early lead. College A, 16 to 21 year olds, Nathan Dearborn, Dalton Keys, Andrew Bangoski, Trey Redman, Slater Collins, Tyler Coulter, Wesley Words, Dominic Stevens, Keaton Henderson, Alex Teeman, Chase Allison, Lane McCormick, also uh, Zach. Knight, Cody Forrester, Caden Ryan, Stephen Harrell, and James Glotta in 10 seconds. And around the first turn. Oh, man, up on two wheels. But look at this. It's going to be the 9-0-8 of Stephen Harrell out of Elkridge, Maryland, grabbing the early lead as we go to the Junior 8 22 plus. Jacob Oba, Alan Blavos, Jeremy Ladon, Lewis Scott, Alex Alioff, Hunter Johnson, Colton Kasuda, 
Brad, uh, Brad Enderell, Dason Como, also uh, Br Bryson Mollahan, Jay Shadron, Brady Myers, Travis Enderall, Devin Masters, and Jared Little in 10 seconds. The 422, Jay Shadron from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. BNR Motorsports Pro Graphics Custom Access, all sponsoring that rider as we go to the Vet B30 Plus class. David Kite, Travis Raphael, Nathan Tickle, Ryan Simmons, also Mark Strahler, Kenneth Rich Jr., Mike Gutt-Reiser, Tim White, Ryan LaCrone, and Adam Derrick in 10 seconds. And they're all the Vet V30 Plus class. And it is a 602 of Mark Reiser from Hubbard, Ohio. Fly Racing, Stuck in Ohio Racing, and BNR backed ride. Senior B40 Plus. Scott Wilhelm, Steve Combs, Douglas Bailey, Richard Seavers, also Ricky Lewis. Ten seconds. Jason Rude, Doug Allball, Rick Marino, Jason Disco, Bobby McCauley, Dave Ashby, Robert Stevens, and Richie McCauley. Four twenty-one. Rick Marino from Niles, Ohio, on a Marino's Custom Concrete and J and J Performance backed ride. College B sixteen to twenty-one. Jacob Fleming, Alex Nelson, Paxton Dickerson, Connor Brandt, Jeremy Kogar, Connor Adair, Hayden Hunter, Gavin Tipple, Sam Zambotti, Dylan Signorella, also Evan Granon, Riley Salick. Ten seconds. Parker Henderson, Blake Norman, Devin Schrock, Jason, or John Ashcraft, Ian Burns, Denton White, Christopher Howard, Cooper Stewart, Damon Grisop, William Walden, Wyatt Lewis, Jan Hickey. Also Richard Williams, Preston Rapsack, Michael Worth, and Mason Howard. 7-10, Chance Hickey and the Middletown Delaware are going to grab the early lead in that one. Junior B, 22 plus class, Corey Pancake, Shane McMillan, Nick May, William Wallace, Cody Bowles, Robbie Rosenberger, also Cody Bosback, Justin Connor, Eric Kroger, Stephen Hannum, Ethan Helbig, 10 seconds. Joseph Murray, or Murphy, Tyler Swain, Brant Barna, Nicholas Blaney, and Henry Moore. Junior B routes that first turn. It's going to be the 188 of Nick May out of Monongahela, Pennsylvania, on a BNR Fly GBC back to Yamaha. And that third turn has taken a beating up there. There's no doubt about that. As that's going to wrap up our start here and, of course, set the stage for a great battle out on the racetrack. Can Walker Fowler make it win number 67, tying the great Bill Balance for the second place position in the all-time wins of ATV racing? And can Hunter Hart go back to back? Can he make it two in a row? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues after this. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Retailer. Distributor. Manufacturer. Product developer parts tester. This is what we do, but who we are is something much simpler. We're riders like you. 100% employee owned and operated, a company built by riders entirely for riders. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. human performance beyond biological limitation.
Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets, sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We changed the industry by formulating the first API qualified 100% synthetic motor oil. The rest of the market has been trying to follow our lead ever since, but a head start is a head start. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or you know, a good day during the week there, but overall I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live. I'm Chuck Lee Master with Team Faith filling in the announcer's booth for Mikey Waynes. And here we are, Millfield, Ohio, at the special at the GBC Power Sports Burr Oak GNCC. Things are off and rolling here in the woods. Safe start for all racers out there. And as you're getting a live look right now on the TV camera, this is the hills, the woods, the the obstacles, the terrain here in Millfield, Ohio at Sunday Creek Raceway. We've been here once already this season with John Penton and able to return here again later in the season. Things have cooled off a little bit. It's a beautiful day for racing. And the action is off and going. Getting our first look right now with the, uh, with the drone view of our racers there on the track. It'll be a few minutes before they start coming through. It'll be... It'll be, a, it'll be a few moments before they start coming through on the finish line, but here's a quick sneak peek at the start preview. Here is the specialized start recap. As the, check, as the green flag flew, it was Walker Fowler off to the first place position, getting that white line, getting the, uh, getting the whole shot award there as he's charging hard off into the woods. Walker Fowler is leading this. Walker Fowler being our current points champion. XC2 race lines up. As the XC1 racers disappear into the woods, XC2 is off and going. Getting a quick look here. It's Ronnie. Well. We know that Ronnie Rush is leading the points championship there. Not getting a clear look at uh, 
It is all good here as XC2 is off and going here. Getting my legs underneath me here as we come into the as we come into the as we come into this race here. We get a quick look at the Yamaha Racing track map. As you can see, we've got uh, checkpoints all through the uh, finish line there. The starting line was on the opposite side of the field as it was to the John Penton. The finish line at the same place as we had. You can see right there at the very middle, the pond, the pro pits. Uh, will these racers be making their way around through the hills, through the woods. It appears to be about a 10 mile track. As we've got laid out here just a little over 10 miles. The FMF PowerPoint is close to the finish, so our spectators that are here at the track able to make their way up the hill right there at the FMF PowerPoint, be able to see some racing action as the racers come banging the bars through that FMF PowerPoint. That's at the very end of the lap. Our racers will be coming through at the, uh, it'll probably take uh, about 25 to 30 minutes for them to complete that first lap. The race clock is at about 15 minutes right now, so I'm I am anticipating probably about 10 minutes minutes or so, 10 minutes or so before they make their way through the finish line. And before they do that, they will be at that FMF power point. You'll be able to poke your head in the woods there, see some hill climbs and see what's uh, see what's happening as this race starts to unfold. Again, it was Walker Fowler with the early lead. The whole shot there is they disappeared off into the woods. Walker Fowler does have a point advantage going into this round here. His, uh, his points are... Uh, We'll have to do the math here to see what it's going to take for him to clinch the championship. But Walker Fowler having an off weekend last weekend. And when we say off weekend for Walker Fowler, some uh, adversity put him back to fifth place overall. And uh, Hunter Hart was the one that was able to capitalize on that. Hunter Hart came away with his first win of the season uh, in that XC1 class. Super pumped for Hunter Hart. He's been working hard at it all season long. He's sitting right now second place in points as he comes into this uh, round number 11. He here at the Burr Oaks GNCC. Jared McClure sitting in a comfortable third place position. Now Jared McClure has been on the podium several times this season, but he's not put himself in the very center of the podium. Early on, it was the Walker Fowler show. Actually, it was Bryson Neal who opened up the 2021 season. We're getting our first look on camera right now. That is Walker Fowler, the number one Yamaha YFZ 450 of Walker Fowler charging his way through the hills and the, the train here at the Burr Oaks GNCC, he looks to be in a lonesome first place position right now. We're still probably 10 minutes away from the uh probably about 10 minutes away from the finish line. We're getting another look at some of these racers, but uh I'm blurring out and not seeing the uh the numbers here. What I do know is that Walker Fowler is leading that pack. He is leading that charge. Well, I'll tell you, when, when we saw the green flag go down, Chuck, uh, we saw Walker Fowler get off to a great start. Uh, as you mentioned a few moments ago, Walker coming off of a subpar finish for him. And, uh, you know, I, I actually texted Walker during the week and, uh, or, and during the, the off time, and I didn't get a return text from Walker <laughs> until yesterday. Oh, he did return. He finally returned my text yesterday. I asked him how things were going because I hadn't heard anything after the incident that put him back in that fifth place position. It kind of set the stage for you. Walker had a, a rather good lead starting to build over Hunter Hart, uh, and he went down. Uh, Hart went by. He stopped to check on him, make sure he was all right. But uh, uh, Walker was down for quite some time because several people got by him, obviously. And then Walker struggled the rest of the day to finish that fifth place position. But uh, Walker did not answer me. So I don't know whether that was he was wanting to keep me in suspense, whether he <laughs> didn't know and didn't want to let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. You know, so one of those situation scenarios, because you know Walker is one of those guys that likes to keep everything within within his realm. He doesn't want Right. anyone to know if there's a chink in the armor he doesn't want anyone to know like last year when he cut the tip of his finger off he didn't want anyone to know didn't even know it but it got out it got out and that was the one thing that he didn't want to get but it wasn't until we were midway through the race that it actually got out he had told me pr just prior to the race and not to say anything until during the race, and then <laughs> we could talk about it. But that's the kind of secrets that that, that Walker likes to hold. So he's and, been and this time no secrets to let out of the bag. No, not no secrets to let out of the bag uh, this time. As uh, he he he's on a mission. He he wants that that 67th win. That's very historic. It will tie him with Bill Balance for the all-time ATV wins record second. Now Chris Borich still holds the all-time wins record at 75. Here's the interesting thing. Once. And I, I mean, it's it's pretty cut in stone for the most part. And I hate to say 
it like that. But, you know, there is a always outside variable. But once Walker established himself with a seventh championship, that will put him in a league of his own with a seven-time championship on the ATV side of things. Except, no, I shouldn't say of his own because Barry Hawk also has seven championships. Seven. And so it will tie him with Barry. So, I mean, we're looking at some big things. In the next few races, Walker will be establishing a, a lot of really – amazing dominance as far as records are concerned and that's one thing that we watched walker fowler do throughout his entire career from the youth ranks all the way through uh his uh, uh amateur ranks and into obviously these pro ranks it's been amazing the records he's been setting and to be able to be here and be a part of this in his home state of ohio today you know maybe that's what he was waiting on maybe that's what that's what the the you know the the, the karma and everything was waiting on to give it to him here at his at, at a home track so to speak so if that's the case we'll see but the way he's riding right now chuck it definitely looks like he he is on point to pull that off but when we look back two weeks ago he was on point to do it again as well but however he also had a shadow in hunter hart so it's a little different scenario this a little week. bit different but i mean the race was only when i saw him on camera here as you were walking into the booth it, we were about 15 minutes into this race and he was out there by himself it was a lonely first position first place position um it'd be great i know that hunter hart wants to tie onto the back wheel of of uh walker but um it looked like walker was able to pull this one out on his own right now so we'll see i mean this is what walker is famous for is he gets gets out there and he sets the pace and he sets it at a blazing pace and um he's brought home a lot of you know with chris borich being so dominant chris always had that suspense because he would take the lead on the last lap and yeah. and uh, walker fowler uh, said man that doesn't work for me i either <laughs> get it early <laughs> or that's just too much work so he likes to get out there and he likes to dominate early on like take the fight right out of his competitors get so far ahead of them that they lose heart well, i think is what he tries to do yeah and it's a different rate, uh, generation as we pick up our leaders here at the nine mile marker the monster mile and, and those guys back there behind walker are not far apart right now but uh you know the tradition of gncc changed when when walker fowler came in uh you know we were in uh coming out of the era from you know obviously we've seen uh chris borch and bill balance and those guys battling it out but after you know before that was barry hawk and you know each champion has been a little bit different and the eras have changed you know you had barry in the two-stroke era and it was all and then the the advent of the four strokes and bill balance he rose through the ranks and that and then chris borch you know he come to take the reins after that each champion has been different they've each done it d in different ways like you said chris borch would wait till the very last lap bill balance was one of the riders that he was a rider that would not necessarily wait to the last lap to do it but he would wait to put himself in position and he wouldn't overdo it too quickly most of the time it would be the second half of the race before you'd really see him light it up walker fowler on the other hand is full on sprint right from the word go i mean it's two hours it's changed the science of racing because not only do you have to now be fast but you have to be fast for two hours and you have to have the endurance to be able to do it exactly and that you know it really it does go back to when walker fowler was battling with chris borich and he in order to beat borich he had to wear Borage down yeah. so he had to go out and just charge so hard from the very start and he's never just stopped that's just that's what it became it, yeah and, and you know I mean it, it's kind of neat in the way the the I guess the the changing of the guard there uh, with uh, Chris and 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 Walker uh, that's what really set the stage and, and the bar for this level of competition the days we pick up with Johnny Gallagher uh, you know I picked numbers he you know if you're not in the top 10 you got to draw your numbers right I picked the number 13 for Johnny the last two times. They asked have me do it when I go down to get the paperwork. <laughs> but the last two times, so I thought it's kind of he's it's, number 13. Yeah, it's almost trademarked <laughs> for him now. <laughs> so he got I mean, last. He, he has got last pick on the gate. Yeah, today. yeah. Well, <laughs> he should have drawn himself. He so should like, have <laughs> <laughs> signed up a little earlier or something. I don't know. Yeah, he got to match his number though. So <laughs> it's uh, it's all good, man. We look forward to look forward to his race report after the fact. Yeah, and good to see him out there. You know, he's been doing this. I was talking to him two weeks ago. He's been he's been racing pro for like thirty years or something. Yeah, <laughs> I think this marks his twenty seventh season as an XC. Or I guess pro. we were talking about how many years have you been racing GNCC? Yeah. and it was over thirty over years. thirty years. Yeah. He, he was one of the first before the modern day youth series that we have. Johnny was a part of the earlier youth series back many many moons ago, some thirty years ago, like you're yeah. talking about. Um, 
you know, we did have, uh, uh, it wasn't quite to the level as what it is now, but there was some youth racing that took place. But, uh, yeah, Johnny was a part of that. So he's been, I mean, this has been his life. He has made it his way. He's 40. Okay, here we go. Some years Finish old, line coming up right now. I see Walker Fowler making the charge through the woods as he comes up to uh, get the yellow flag from Ricky Towery. All right, one lap in the history books now as we uh, update our timing and scoring. We'll see what the uh, deficits are and I always like this part of the race right here. Just I do too because that deficit is not you know it's, he's not so lonely as it looked on camera a no. little bit ago. It, it's very deceptive sometimes when we see these camera shots I mean it, we're looking at a four and a half second difference between Walker Fowler and Cole Richardson in first and second. Jared McClure is only another 1.7 and it looks like Chris uh. Borich may be out of this one. He looks all right, but he does, but I can read sign language yeah. and he's saying that his four wheeler went this way and he went that way and now he's in the pits. So that's <laughs> what he said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here we are. The good thing is uh, Chris is uh, up. He's okay. And uh, he does seem to have a little bit of a smile on his face. Um, Chris is uh, a daddy, obviously. He's got, uh, I think it's a little girl. I'm pretty sure. He got, but he's got another baby on the way. I saw uh, a mama-to-be and grandmother uh, pushing uh, the other baby out uh, around. So uh, congratulations to Chris on that. The uh, new addition to the family, I'm sure, will be coming up here pretty soon. But, uh, man, that guy right there, when you look at that, uh, and if you don't, you're not familiar with the history of GNCC, looking at Chris Borch, you're looking at a very historic uh, character in, uh, in our GNCC racing Oh, he's history. definitely a legend, and, and he's still out there doing it, and that yeah. is actually... Selfie. We're back, and we're trying to regain power here in the. As uh, race we do division. that, I can at least look at the live timing and scoring. We've got some, we've got some XC2 riders checking in now. It looks no. like Brandon Owens is leading that XC2 class. But uh, to recap, Walker Fowler came through in first place. It was Cole Richardson that was right behind him. Jared McClure in third, and then Devin Feehan checked in. Hunter Hart back in fifth. Adam McGill in sixth, and then John Glotta in well, it appears to be seventh. Uh, Austin Abney in eighth and Brandon Owens in ninth. So there's Brandon Owens leading that XC2 class, has worked his way up into the top ten. And uh, behind him is Ben Kowalski in second place. Ronnie Rush, our current points leader, is running in third place in that XC2 class. Wow. So uh, some differences there in that XC2. You know, something else I wanted to point out while we're watching this out here at the one mile marker. And here they come on the downhill portion of the monster mile section. And uh, again, um, you know, Walker, uh, Cole, Jared, Devin, and Hunter Hart, those are your top five. Something I want to point out, Devin Feehan, Hunter Hart, and uh, also Jared McClure are not only top GNCC racers, but those are the top and premier riders oftentimes right. in the uh, NIOA series, the New York Off-Road Association series up there. And what was really neat is we saw an all-New England podium at the last race when we saw Devin Feehan on the podium. We saw Jerry McClure, who's right there on the New York PA state line, basically. And then, of course, uh, Devin from, from New York. I thought that was pretty cool that we saw uh, saw that happen last time with, uh, with those riders. And the good thing is we're seeing all three of those those riders riding very strong and consistent back-to-back -back races all are in the top five. I will point this out. I think Hunter Hart, if memory serves me correct, was in seventh place at the end of lap number one at the last round of racing. So he's in a little better shape than he was. He's in a lot two, better shape. Yeah, two weeks ago. And, uh, you know, looking at the deficit, he's probably well within... 12, 13 seconds of first place right now whenever you start doing the math right now. So that's pretty impressive that these guys are all that tight throughout the entire top five right now. There is a little bit of a gap 
Well, not much. Well, not really. Two it, seconds. It looks like with, with, <laughs> That's with, a big gap compared yeah. to all the other guys. Yeah, <laughs> with, with first, to, first to fifth place, which Hunter Hart's in fifth place right now, it looks like there's about two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds or so. Is that seven? Yeah. I, okay. Well, four. Six, eight, nine. Okay, nine right. seconds. I, 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 I was just trying to. I was going to say ten, but I thought that's too little, so I said thirteen. And wow, yeah, that, you're right though. It is yeah. cl quite tighter than I thought. And then Adam McGill is only he's what twenty four seconds back now, pushing twenty five seconds back. No, that's John Glotta behind yeah, McGill. John Glotta, yeah, he's only two point uh, three behind Hunter Hart. So yeah, if you so want to say uh, uh, twelve seconds for first through sixth. Sixth, okay, and then I'm closer to and right. That's after, and that's after twenty four minutes of racing. Wow, that's so, that's yeah, impressive. Yeah, you know my my camera angle when we were first looking at that. Wow, Walker looks all alone. Well, that camera was zoomed in pretty <laughs> tight. So, uh, cameraman playing tricks on me there. But that's all good because we love racing. We love to see good, tight, close racing, and that's exactly what we've got. We're looking at this Monster Mile uh, one right now a little bit technical as these guys are having to slow down a bit and you see the uh massive amount of spectators out there waiting for something to happen but uh, <laughs> <laughs> right now i think that uh, the level of competitors coming through there pretty much know what they're doing you mentioned the xc2 pro-am class there just a moment ago uh we saw uh, Brandon Owens take a uh, hole shot and uh, you know Owens is a, a rider that uh, I've been kind of tooting his horn all season I think we talked a lot about him in last season as well and uh, Owens is one of those riders that is projected to possibly be a challenger in the XC1 class here in a couple more years uh, so you know we've seen the glimpses of greatness of him. when he's on he's on and if you saw that start out there today that guy was on today look 57 seconds when he took off today he had one thing in mind and that was to win the XC2 Pro-Am class and to win it big and and you could tell he had about six bike lengths by the time he hit the first turn second turn probably eight bike links and then we it was saw on. that on the uh we did a recap here as you were coming up and um i totally missed it i was like man that guy's way out front but i didn't catch the number and there it is it's brandon owens yeah that owens uh, just i mean just a flawless start like we said 57 seconds and you know whenever you take into account ronnie rush has been kind of the whole shot expert as of lately in the xc2 pro-am class and, and gotten a few wins and that championship is starting to get pretty exciting too and we'll, we'll try to talk about that if you can pull up those points there real quick Chuck, but uh, I mean Owens, Kowalewski, Ronnie Rush, Tanner Walker, uh, one other rider, the 621, uh, I know he is one of the riders that is in the, uh, Wyatt Wilkin is a rider that is in the thick of things as well. So right now it is Ronnie Rush with the points lead. He's got uh, uh, about a 43 point lead or so over Tanner Walker. Ben Kowalewski is running at third place in points. Uh, Kenny Schick with a somewhat consistent season. He's finished twice out of the top ten, but most of the rest of the time he was within the top five. So that holds on fourth place points for him. Brandon Owens has three wins this season, but he had a 13th in round one. Uh, he's got three wins on the season. He had an 18th, he had a DNF, and another 13th. So either Brandon Owens is on or he's not on, and uh, that's why we don't see him necessarily, I, I think, vying for the national championship right now in the XC2 Pro-Am class. But man, he is a certain, certainly a thorn in the side. But as far as that championship run is concerned, Ronnie Rush is doing everything that he needs to do right now to maintain that 43 point or utilize that 43 or to point. Utilize lead. it with only three rounds left. Exactly. We got today plus two more, so yeah. he needs to ride smart, which is what he's doing, and he's up there in the he's in the top three. I know he wants to bring home another win, but uh, man, you know, with Brandon Owens having a 57 second gap over second place. I mean, Ronnie's just going to have to ride smart today, and, and no shame in that. No doubt about it. Welcoming to the booth. Uh, did you did you end up winning? I had to leave a little early. He no, got uh, you. Yeah, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, he was uh, leading the 4x4 Pro class today, and uh, man, got the whole shot today. Talk about Cody Collier. Welcome to uh, Racer TV, and uh, uh, congratulations on a great ride. I know you might have came up a little bit short. Uh, at Landon, I think, uh, captured the championship right today. Yep. Yeah, he, uh, he got me on the last lap. We, uh, we had a good run today. Uh, got to a great start. And, uh, got thank you. Uh, got that whole shot and uh, uh, put put down burn in the first two laps. Uh, ended up snapping uh, one of my rear axles uh, halfway through that second lap and. Uh, just couldn't, couldn't find pace, kept on slide, rear and wanted to slide on me all day, and uh, he caught me through the lappers, and last lap he put the put the charge on and uh, uh, split a lapper and got around me around the outside, and uh, I had to pick up the pace to try to keep up with him with that rear end uh, kicking on me, and uh, 
Did, uh, didn't ended the four wheeler end up swallowing you? Yeah, I ended up uh, doofing it into a creek and quad <laughs> landed on me. It was a spectacular crash. Dude, you've had one time. of the most storied years. You're going to be on quad radio very soon. We're going to do an in depth interview and just talk about this season alone, race by race, because every race seems to have its have, own special have story. Something for him. He comes out with a win at the opener and then he's got disastrous results and then he gets a win. And then, I mean, you he look gets at the season. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, really comes today's, after him. today's only my sixth finish of the year. Uh, it's, it's sixth finish and we're at round 11 right now. Wow. Yeah, I just had bad, bad, bad luck. And uh, I had, coming into this round, I had five of my finishes before this round. Uh, four of them were wins and then a second place. Wow. And then, uh, so pace has always been there. Just get, getting the bike together, getting the, learning the nuances of the new bike on the 4x4. Four four and uh, uh, we're figuring out slowly but surely. Well, speaking of paces, you come from the XC1 Pro class at uh, a point in your career. And, of course, uh, a former uh, top XC2 Pro Am racer as well, and of course, uh, uh, knowing what these riders are going through right now, talk a little bit about this because I know I'm, I'm sure you were keeping up with what was going on coming into this when Walker got off to a great start. But man, what a battle going on behind him! Actually, with him, whenever you're only looking at a four and a half second gap. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's tight out there. Um, just getting little drives up hills, you can gain and get lose a second huge out here. The how slick it is with the rain that we got this week, it's polishing off. Uh, in some sections, some se sections is just so deep with the mud, it's just nothing but traction. But, uh, and there's uh, a lot of diversity in this track, like right here, I mean, you can't see a lot of it, but there's actually some dust that is starting to kick up in some areas. It's not dusty, so no. to speak, but it, it, there's a, it, it's starting to dry out some, I guess, is, is kind of my point there. But uh, yeah, this clay, the consistency of the clay, I'm sure you saw a big change in it during your race. I'm sure it went from slick to attack to probably polished off slick by yeah, the end of the race. Section is Section to section. Uh, this has been this is honestly one of my favorite Penton tracks that we've had over the years. Uh, just the variation and the section to section difference uh, really gives you a different feel. Section to section. That's awesome. And uh, uh, the track itself uh, uh, is it much different than what we saw here at the John Penton a few months ago? Uh, yeah, it was so hard packed earlier this year, and uh, th th this has a lot of really soft holes in it. Not not like what uh, we're used to earlier in the year. Right. It's, uh, it's gotten really long, uh, deep braking bumps, bumps, and uh, acceleration bumps out of the corners, and not square edges like we're used to here. And, and I'll tell you, uh, I'm sure that the moisture content in the ground might have a little bit to do with oh, that. Yeah. We got that rain coming in on Wednesday and Thursday. It uh, certainly made uh, a lot of uh, issues for people getting in. Hey, there is the Geico Gecko. We want to take this opportunity to welcome Geico Motorcycle Insurance along to the uh, GNCC Racing Nation. And, of course, uh, Racer TV wants to salute them out today, of course, uh, helping uh, bring... Uh, insurance policies for your motorcycles and for your entire life basically i mean they've got home insurance they got auto insurance but uh, out here in support of motorcycle insurance so we encourage you to stop by and see them while here at the races we also encourage you, if you're at home watching to uh, get hold of them and talk to them and say hey pass it along we appreciate what you're doing that uh, we know that uh, racer productions and the gncc appreciate the fact that they are there uh, we got a little bit of a moment here while we wait on some more traffic to come through let's talk a little bit about this uh, this race course Man, those those are pretty deep ruts in this section of the yeah, course. Yeah, that's uh, the section to section. This is one of the softer sections on the track. And uh, as you can see, coming into the corner, um, people are coming through where uh, the downhill is kind of harder packed and it's got the soft hole coming into the corner and everyone's coming down with so much speed. And then you're diving into that off camera and just creating a hole coming into the corner. So that's that's kind of an off camber turn right there. Yeah, you're diving you're diving in from an off camera into a flat part and just the way your momentum uh, is yeah, shifting I see it now. and everything, yep. it just throws you to the outside and it's making a pocket on the outside. And, uh, if you're able to break just before it and hop over the deep stuff is what I try to do, and it you can gain a second instead of hitting the deep pot, deep spot and trying to have the bar dripped out of your hands and all that fun Boy, stuff. Boy, that's going to work out great tomorrow for two wheels. Oh, they're <laughs> going to have fun. Yeah, it's going to be, they're going to have some that, eight lines wide in some sections. Up yeah, that section right there, that off camera that might uh, frustrate you ATVers, uh, the, the two wheel guys are going to love that, be able to carve <laughs> that berm right there. But, uh, but man, that's, that's the beauty of GNCC racing is that we do it all from two wheels to four wheels. And today uh, we got some of the world's fastest on four wheels that are hanging out with us. And, um, getting to see some live action from our, our camera shot. Now, a few minutes, a few moments ago, when Walker Fowler was uh, going through getting chased by uh, Cole Richardson, we had that really awesome drone camera view. It looked like about three seconds between the two of them. So, Man. Uh, Cole Richardson has him in sight, and that's good. That's good for Cole. I mean, he yeah. if he can pace off a of Walker, 
uh, and make that last. That this will be a really good race for for Cole. And, and Cole, Cole needs it now, you know. And, and we and we see little glimpses like that. You know, if Cole could just put things together, yep. he would be a championship contender. Yep. There's no doubt about it. He'll have a really good race. He's capable of winning races. He's done it on more than one occasion, and 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 done it back to back on a couple of occasions yep. as, as as far as that is concerned. But he just can't string, not necessarily wins together, but. The, the 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 better finishes that that right. help the, add to that the top the, three yeah the consistency that you see out of like Walker Fowler in this instance or if you're an ATV motocross fan the consistency that you would see out of a guy like Chad Weenan or something like that guy never finishes off the podium and that's right. and and that's all you can almost say the same for Walker I mean he does miss the podium on occasion but when you look back at the track record and you look back at the results you just got to shake your head in amazement at how consistent his finishes have been over the course of his uh, not only these seven championships that he's working on, but even before the championships started reeling around. I mean, whenever he was racing head-to-head -head with Chris Borch, I believe it was, what, 2014? Uh, whenever they came down, it was the final lap, the final race. Walker Fowler came through the pro pits. He gave a big... I remember I was standing at the end of the pro pits. He did his he did the fist pump in the air like, I got this, I got the championship. Came around, what, a half mile later, Chris Borch dove into the inside, stole the win away from him. And, you know, that... And, and and but even that year he would it, whoever won that race would have won the championship but even that year you look back at the consistency of Walker Fowler that's what put him in the that's position what put him there yeah. against the greatest exactly uh, yeah, guys like him are just an anomaly like uh, everyone in this X1 pro class is so fast any given weekend with their different techniques and different talents can really shine on different tracks based on the conditions you know if this was if we didn't get that rain this week you would see a different oh. lineup a little bit you know yeah. like it would it changes the pace and how you attack the track with it being as soft as it is having these deep holes that except for that guy riders. that's out front <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, this track's really tricky to gain a lot of time and you have to really risk it to try to gain two sections in a certain section with it being this deep right in these holes it's uh it's difficult to gain a lot of time if you can kind of match and mimic like cole's doing uh, i don't I don't know if Walker's going to be able to pull on him today with the, how the track's shaping up. I think Cole's going to be able to match him for most of the day, at, maybe with a lap to go. Right. Uh, that, that's a very good point, track. you know, you know, and that's a very good point whenever you take into considerations the uh, the conditions of the track itself. And, and with there not being any dust today, no breathing problems, no, uh, no problems for the, for the bikes themselves, no overly muddy section, so it's not like they're packing up mud and heating the machines up. They're not getting facefuls of mud. So vision, uh, bike performance, traction, everything for the most part is optimal. And everybody's on an even playing field. And since Walker couldn't really stretch it out and get away from those guys and they can still see him i think i think that's a very good point to prove right there that you know he's not going it likely will not stretch this one out this will be one that he will have to tussle with those guys and and, and one thing that we got to remember as race fans when we come down to this situation cole richardson is good in the clutches he, he can pull him out like this uh, when he gets head-to-head -head with Walker Fowler. We've seen him do it before, uh, pass him straight up on more than one occasion, and uh, if he can ride behind him, you know, we may, we may see that, that record uh, tying with Bill Balance put off for maybe another race, maybe two more races. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of hunger out there. You remember last exactly. race I talked about with there's, – there's Walker Fowler. Now let's get a clock on this. This looks like it might be opening up a little bit more right now. There's – Oh, it is. Yeah, I, it has. I'm at five seconds. Down. Six. Make me eat my words. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we changed camera view, so all right. No. Okay, oh, there he is. Okay. We just missed him. Yeah. Man. Uh, this left line, I think, is hands down faster. I think Jared's going to take it. Yep. Uh, I think you get another two sections the way it drops down into that section. You get a great drive into the next section. You miss this uh, right-left hook. Uh, in the main line. It's uh, more of an arc section. You can gain another right. two sections all the way around that left line. Wow, and those are the kind of things that you need to be looking out for. I bet you Walker rode right past that and kicked himself in the tail whenever Probably. he was He out. knows it's there from past years. I, it just the way we're, the, the different sections, the way we're uh, mixing the track up uh, race to race, um, it catches you off guard. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I but then Cole followed him today. right there too. You know? Yeah, yeah. He just like because he's got because he's got down, yeah. he's got Walker in sight. You yeah. know, we didn't see it with that first bit of camera angle, but uh, yeah, he had Walker in sight, so he's able to take the same lines, which is normally a really smart thing to do. 
uh, take the same lines as Walker. But, uh, yeah, I liked what uh, Jared did there. You're right. It was definitely a little bit faster, and everybody followed him, Devin and Hunter, right on through. And there are still, I mean, for people that are here at the track and not able to see Racer TV, they're still lined up. They're, they're still uh, stacked up on top of each other. Feehan there. That's uh, yeah. Devin Feehan. Yeah, Feehan. Okay. Gap starting. Merit, so De Merit, Devin is. That's Merritt. I'm Merit. Okay. Josh Merritt. Okay. Yeah, yeah that would uh, make sense. Where's Mer Merritt's up a couple of spots then? He was running 10th. Let's yeah, see where it looks he's like at. he got around Abney there. It looked like Abney was right behind him. Looks like he's up to the eighth place spot in XC1. Yep, up to eighth now. So way to go. He's featured on the event T-shirt today. Both he and Austin Abney, as a matter yeah, of right, fact, having a little fun out there today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so ba they, they're battling for who wants to be on that head spot next year. There you go. And then there's Junior. Uh, John Glauda Junior. Looks like he's dropped back uh, behind Abney and Merritt. <clears throat> I'll tell so you, they're up to the seventh spot. There's a story too. Uh, this kid coming through the ranks, his whole family's racing, aren't they? Oh yeah, every single, yeah, um, all, all but the daughter, but she's a photographer for him. <laughs> she, she does great work. She's a photographer, has her nice uh, professional setup. She does great stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, all three of the boys, uh, uh, John Glauda Jr., uh, James Glauda, and Landon, they all three race. Now, didn't so. Senior used to race as senior well? Senior used to. He's a uh, yeah, he's uh, he had his fun with it. I'm um, he he races occasionally still. Um, but yeah, he's devoted for his kids, making sure they're set up. Uh, having James run uh, top runner in the amateur division in College A, and then uh, Landon's coming up through the ranks in the in the ranks in the minis. So yeah. Now, what do you what do you guys? I mean, whenever you guys are talking behind the scenes with your buddies over there in the pro pits and stuff, do do you guys talk about? I mean, do you see? Uh, John Glotta Jr. as a potential threat in the near future or anything as far as the XC1 class is concerned? Yeah, uh, I, I think he just got to put it together and really want it. His, uh, he's got a really good setup, a really good program with him and his dad. Um, this is only his second it, year it just, in here. Yeah, uh, yeah. he's young. He's, yeah. uh, 18, he's young. He's very young. I don't know his age exactly, but uh, just got to have a couple more things click. Once uh, Starting out in the amateur ranks, you know, it's like climbing a ladder. The rungs are really long and it, you can jump up speed very easily but once you get up this XC1 division those rungs are inches apart just to get an extra second extra 10 seconds a lap is just insane like I, I was a uh, one the outside looking in like there's a top five in this class that are just another tier than the rest of them some races and uh, like the consistent Walker Jared uh, Hunter Cole just you know just always right up front and there's the the stuff that they can do I just is incredible Incredible, no doubt about it, out at the eight mile marker. Wow, 46 minutes into this race already. Hard to believe that we're nearing the halfway point and uh, it's uh, certainly flying by. This has been a, a rather, uh, to me, a rather interesting, even though there's not been a lot of action as far as passes and stuff like that, it has been somewhat of an interesting race because we're kind of like sitting on the edges of our seat waiting to see, is Hunter going to make some passes? Is, is Devin going to make some passes? Wh wh when or if they're going to do it, you know, and, and knowing that they're coming off of that high from two weeks ago, you know they want to get up there and at least be a part of the podium, and everybody knows that Walker's coming in with a mission this week, and especially after what took place uh, a couple weeks ago. But they also know that he's not invincible. That's wow. that's stacked up. For they are about first five, through five. Six, Adam uh, looks like Hunter's gone around Feehan, uh, as our order on our screen shows. Hunter's gotten around Feehan, then McGill's right there. So our top six it look like they're within ten seconds. Well, Hunter's starting to make his move up here as we uh, are now at the nine mile marker. I think this is is this the X Rock Split Rock area down in that area, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think our track is about ten and a half miles long today. Wow. So we're coming up on that uh, that FMF Power Point that uh, brings you down to the finish line. So we should be coming into the finish uh, here in the next uh, couple minutes, I would say. Um, and, you know, and I hate to keep talking about it, but what what Cody was saying there and the diversities of the soils, the differences, I mean, you can actually see it. Uh, you see it on screen uh, right now. You can see now, it can't. on screen, screen right now. I, Yeah, I mean, that doesn't look nearly as soft and tacky. It looks more drier there than it did in other areas of the racetrack. Yeah, that had uh, that, that just ha didn't have a lot of You're soft stuff on top, so it just instantly got to this real hard clay base that we have here at the Penton. And uh, there's also a giant rock base in the middle of that. There's stage. our cameraman getting yeah. us a good look at the FMF PowerPoint there, yeah, looking at the looks, dirt right is that, there. That's a little wetter through there, isn't it? A little yeah, it, we, AM did not run on that, um, neither in that last section. But uh, Yeah, this looks fairly fresh. They've only been through this uh, 
ATVs have only been through here one once today. Yep. So one lap today. They'll be coming through here a second time. This is the um, this is the FMF PowerPoint at the mile marker 10, just above the hill, just over the hill there from the finish line. So all of our spectators here at the track can make their way out there. There's a little bit of a hill climb there. Yeah, and this. This stuff's really loose. It's not like the other section where it's been tacky. If you, the leaves and this is really loose, you'll see a lot of tire spin in this section. Yeah, for sure. Wow. But we've got the cameraman out there. Look forward to seeing this as they come through. They should be uh, momentarily. We'll see Walker come through. And as we saw in our previous shot, they're stacked up uh, second through six. We're stacked up right behind them. I mean, it's still here we are uh, almost 50 minutes into this race. Uh, race clock says 49 minutes There's into Walker. There's Walker right there. So 49 minutes into it, and we're, look, we're stacked up. There comes Cole. Yeah, about four seconds back there, still in that uh, second place position. And still charging hard up through that. I remember that hill climb from uh, earlier this year. Jeremy McCore, Hunter Hart, yep. getting Little some air time there. Guys. I mean, there's like a series. There's a series of three jumps heading up there and having to jump over some roots. So good place to hang out. It's really easy to get to for the spectators. Just go up the hill from the was, from the finish line. Was that Hart around Behan right there? I couldn't. I thought. Yes. I, I yes. thought that's what it looked like. Yeah. So, oh, okay. You already pointed out. I thought he was around. Never mind. Yep. Thought, he, thought he made two passes and got ahead of myself. So there. we still have Walker and then Cole, Jared, and then I think it's Hunter. As, as we're getting, this is coming down the hill here towards the finish line, yep. coming up through the finish line right now. Walker Fowler on screen. Getting glimpses of him through the trees there. Ricky Towery still waving the yellow flag. This might be a five-lap race, guys. It, it could be. It was for us this morning. Yeah, was it, really? it was yeah. for the morning, and Ricky's still hanging that yellow flag. So there it is. There's the number three of Cole Richardson, followed by the uh, number four of Jared McClure. Man, look at that view from the, from the drone. Cole's about one or two mistakes or one or two good walker lines away from being out of reach, being out of sight and the walker being able to run away. He's like, he's just out of sight on some lines. Yeah, all it takes is just a, just a, a, no. a mere moment for something like Cole's this to happen. Cole's five and a half seconds behind Walker Fowler, but then it's two seconds to Jared and it's uh, – it's a second back to Hunter. So, I mean, again, you could about throw a blanket over these top six riders. Well, my question comes now. We're not quite to the one-hour mark as Walker Fowler makes his way down the one-mile marker at the Monster Mile uh, pitting strategies. Do we go an extra lap? Uh, I mean, what generally can you get? I mean, these. The, I mean, I don't think they're using a lot of fuel. So another lap uh, pitting after lap three might not be inconceivable for some of these guys, huh? Lap four would be a stretch. I would be surprised if anyone hits lap four. I would expect either they uh, fuel, they most of them will fuel lap three. Fuel, fuel here yeah. on this lap, all right. all do lap three just to be safe. I would be surprised if anyone lap four. I think they would make it, but I don't think anyone wants to take the risk. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it, because you're going to have to pit no matter what, so yeah. no sense risking it. Yeah, That's they're all right there together. I mean, if you need it, it's so hard to pass here. If you, Some of these guys might pit on lap two just to try to – get away. Yeah. I, I think that's what Jared McClure here did. Yeah, uh, he, he's dropped he back. He it. stalled it right there. Just a simple mistake. But yep. uh, I think he pitted there on lap two trying to get back on these guys and being able to pass. It is so hard to pass out So here he's today. playing the long game. Yeah. He's waiting for them to pit uh, later on so I, that he can get his spot back. He, but he's going to have to close up that gap a little bit. Cause he's, he's got the pace. He's seen the lines for a lap. and Two laps now, he's seen the lines. He, I think he's going to put on a charge B right there and get by practically all of them when they pit. Look out for the sneaky snake. <laughs> <laughs> the sneaky snake. Yeah. Hey, he's got that name for a reason. <laughs> That's right. Now, now, Rodney, you are the encyclopedia of ATV races. Uh -oh. So when was Jared's last win? He's thinking hard. No, I'm thinking, was it? Uh, seems like it might have been. Uh, it wasn't Iron Man, I don't think. It would have been, what was this, sn Snowshoe maybe? I want to say Snowshoe 18 or That's what Iron I'm thinking. Man 17. Yeah, one of the. Sneaky uh, Snake's last win. Yeah, when was Jared McClure's last win here? We got our. Uh, yeah, we got. We, we got, got the. We got the eye in the sky talking to us I'm now. Thinking, I think I'm God's thinking it was Snowshoe <laughs> is what I'm thinking, but it could have been Iron Man too, so. So we, anyway, uh, Any, anyway, he's due. I mean, yeah, he's been yeah, working that, that's so hard exactly for what it. I think the point that uh, he's trying to make right there. He's <laughs> due for it. Yeah, yeah. He's been he's been so close so many times, and, and we've seen him on the podium. You know, middle of the box uh, several times, wow. but uh, it has been it has been a little while, and that guy has never given up heart. And uh, Brand Owens right here uh, as all but caught Junior, who's running. Uh, Ninth place in the XC1 class. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Put, put down some heaters. Right now. He got the whole exactly. shot today. How far uh, ahead is he now? 
Oh, they haven't even checked in. Well, they? Brandon's checked in, but we're still waiting on uh, on Ben there. The ben, Ronnie, and Tanner were looked like they were within about five seconds when they went by around the eight mile marker. There's uh, over uh, two with minutes. Johnny Gall Gallagher sandwich. <laughs> or over. <laughs> John, 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 Johnny's always in that oh, sandwich. Yeah. Have, have fun. He, gets, he, ride, he rides real good. He ca those extra two leaders catch him. He's just like, I'm going to hang with these kids no matter uh -huh. what. <laughs> 2015 snowshoe, I think, is what I'm here. No. no, no, no. It's been since that 2015. That was the first. I think that was the first. Yeah, we're still talking about Sneaky Snake here. Yeah. His first win was probably 2015. 20 X Factor? X I don't. Rem I didn't remember him winning X Factor, but the, the, the year after the mutter. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was yeah, the, the year. I guess yeah. it was 2017. Johnny won the first year, and then the second year X Factor. Jared McClure got the win there. Ah, see, uh, the encyclopedia missed that page, man. Yeah, <laughs> that page. I don't. Well, but the, the, the X Factor was so good for uh, so good for for knocking us off of our game. It was always somebody a little unusual right. that you wouldn't predict, and yep. And they had big deer there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking so ben, of deer, speaking of deer, and we were talking about Johnny Gallagher there just a few moments ago. I heard a rumor that uh, Johnny was uh, practicing this week and actually hit a deer. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. I've uh, been there. <laughs> Have you done there. that? Oh, yeah, I've hit a couple deer. With four, four yeah. or sport? Four-wheeler. Uh, uh, sport quad. The sport quad. Yeah, I, yeah, I've yet two on the 4 I'd way four. rather hit it with a 4x4. With a four four. <laughs> <laughs> I have never hit a deer. There's Johnny Gallagher. Going There's Johnny right G now. right there. Old deer slayer himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's got that he's big. He's got that huge trophy. He yeah, posted he it on Facebook this last yeah. week. So, yeah, a deer slayer. <laughs> <laughs> he gets, a, gets him with the uh, wins. Right, now, who's this pick? So it, we just missed. Ronnie Rush came through first, but he took a pit here on lap two. Uh, Johnny Gallagher was in the middle of that pack. Uh, ben K. Uh, I, I missed Ben K. I believe he was ahead or right with Ronnie when Ronnie Pale was distracted by Ronnie. Yeah, he was pit. just he was but, just uh, ahead. Just ahead. Ronnie pitted there. So Ben K. Uh, Tanner Walker was right there, and Kenny Schick. They looked like they were within about ten seconds. So big battle there for second place next to shaping up. Uh, Kenny ran him down from behind. It looked like I didn't see him on the eight mile. Uh, shot. Well, I tell you, we've got a very, very up and coming uh, uh, pro am class right now. When you look at the names like uh, Owens and uh, Kowalewski, Ronnie Rush, Tanner Walker, Kenny Schick, uh, again, you know, I bet he is maturing, and that kid is about um, ready to set the world on fire. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, a he, he, uh, vet in the class, done his research. He's uh, got the experience for it. Yep. Just, uh, looks like he's put, been putting it together here the last few rounds. Uh, yeah, he to has. See it. Then uh, Wyatt Woken, who's yeah. uh, out this weekend with an illness. Yeah, I was wondering what what happened to Wyatt. He's had yeah. some pretty good uh, pretty bad illness. If Wyatt Woken's going to miss a race, yeah. he's he's, uh, he's hurt from what I hear. Yeah, it's, um, oh, that's that's too bad. Hate yeah. to hear that for him. Yeah, you have that this time of year, I guess. Sometimes <laughs> with, the, with the weather. Or, hey, and it is or the first the, se the season. season yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the, the cool thing about it is we are smack dab in the official first weekend of fall this weekend. We are. And uh, I think that's really neat. Uh, the trees still got a lot of green on them, but you know, uh, when we head over in a couple of weeks to uh, West Virginia for the buck week, we're going to see some I think some foliage, foliage some some color. colors, and by the time we reach Ironman, it, it is, is going to be, be beautiful. Mm. Yeah, my favorite race of the year. Just yeah. I mean, probably because it's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and like our producer says, and, and I want to see the pr beauty of it, but at the same time, uh, Adam brings up a very good point. It'd be nice to have the leaves gone so we can watch the races yeah. in the trees like we have and use the uh, the drone footage like we do earlier. We've got such a great drone operator. I don't know how how he flies it like that. but uh, Yeah, we got a couple of great drone operators. Uh, Daniel Rogerson is uh, operating the drone here today. Uh, my great nephew, uh, Dylan Atkins, is also a uh, drone operator. He operates it a lot whenever Daniel's not here. So a uh, couple of different individuals that uh, do a mighty fine job of uh, uh, keeping the, the Yamaha live drone right where in the oh, place. Oh, man, that kudos to them. We sure appreciate them for sure because that's, uh, that's some really cool, really cool footage there. So looks like uh, we've got a, a static shot set up here just waiting on the leaders to pop out of the woods. And, and, and while we got this moment, I do want to commend uh, Dan Reinhardt, who is basically our IT guy, the guy basically that makes it all happen for us. He's the one that picked uh, Dylan out of everyone and said, hey, you're a video gamer, right? He said, yeah. He says, I want to try you on the drone. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding, man. And, and your parents said that nothing would ever come playing with those video games all day. <laughs> Actually, the kid makes money playing video games. Hey, hey, there's Walker right now on screen. 
Slight, wow, well, he's getting a little over. loose there on the corners. And he's it's looking so over his shoulder. Off camber. See how it's polished off and shiny? Yep. No yep. traction. Okay, here he comes in for a pit stop. Where is second place, guys? Goggles go. Uh, yeah, where is second place? Cole was one mistake away from being out of sight Just and Walker putting the hammer down. Exactly and, what you and said. And Walker's is calm, cool, collected, getting some goggles. In and out. He's off. Wow. He's in and out, and nobody was in sight yet. So, I mean, okay. How do you? I Here, mean, not just not just second place. There, yeah. He. It's almost like he knew he had to pit, so he picked up the pace. Oh. That's not like Walker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised so many people pitting on lap two. Yeah. Well, lap, well this is lap three. three. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. beginning of lap three. So yeah. they, yeah, that's a, that's still a pretty long. Well, that's yeah. where the pit star though yeah. is at the right beginning at the of the lap. So and we are at the one hour mark. Yeah, the technical halfway yeah, point so of the race. Yeah, so this is, this this would do it. Yeah. I guess technically 59 minutes and 10 seconds, but regardless, uh, we're <laughs> round up. <laughs> we're, uh, yeah. we're right there in that one hour uh, time frame. But, uh, yeah, well, so I guess this isn't necessarily the beginning of the lap. The so laps are running about 26 uh, minutes long, and we're 16 minutes into this lap, so you know we're a third of the way through the lap. Right. So I'm trying to do some calculations here. If we're running 25 minute laps. That puts us, yeah, 20 minutes short. So we're actually probably going to be running about five, ten minutes, uh, maybe a little over a two little hours. Over. Yeah. Wow. How long did you go this morning? Hey, how y'all doing? There's uh, I some. <laughs> I don't either. I was calling your race, but I don't. That's right. Howard Russell. Hey, yeah. it's Howard right I there. I didn't recognize him there for a second, but that right there is our uh, fearless leader here at the Russell family. At farm. the Russell family farm, this yeah. is the guy that kind of keeps it all together, and even has a mud hole named after him at Snowshoe. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh oh, there's Walker having a little. Man, look at it. There. Yeah, yeah. He didn't like his water bottle. Okay, so is that is that Cole? Yep, yep. There. Uh, so is how Cole, is he so is Cole far? Cole without a uh, pit stop then? Oh, here's what it is. We must have missed him going by whenever he went in. But I think that Cole's pit is the very first pit coming into the pit road. Okay. is what it is. So okay, we yep. didn't see him around the corner because he kind of came around there. Actually, he's out of sight of pit road yep. in, in, in a sense. So, there yeah. you go. That makes sense. So he was pitting at the same time that Walker was. Yeah. He had to pull off early and made it look like Walker was all alone. Right. So that, that answers that question. <laughs> and, and it can be very deceiving. And, and uh, I'm glad I remembered that, or I would have not, I would have wondered how that all transpired. Right. But, but you, you got to take into that account. Sometimes Walker's pit will be first, sometimes it will be last. But regardless. He kind of gets to pick, doesn't he? Um, no, not really, I don't think. I think it's just it's, the flow of the track. Well, it's still, it's assigned to him, though, being number one. Yeah, he gets, yeah. He gets the best spot. He gets the best spot, yeah. yeah. The uh, I guess most visible spot, especially as well. So uh, yeah, and then Cole gets the third, not pick, but the, the, the third you spot. Know, you get number three, he gets the third spot. Well, battle for the lead on screen right now. As we get to watch along at the edges of our wood line here, this is out by the old start as they cross back across the road now and head into. Uh, Back on the east side of the property, I guess. Look at this. Here comes a nose-to-tail battle going on now in that uh, looked like uh, maybe that could have been. Uh, uh, was that McGill who moved up a little bit? It's Hunter bit? and Feehan. There's McGill right okay. now about five seconds back. All right. Then that, uh, yeah, those guys are going at it still. I mean, nose-to-tail swapping it out. And and uh, I don't know if they're losing time on the leaders or, or what the case is, but uh, this battle, it, it better end soon if one of them wants to try to lay chase to those guys ahead of them, I think. Well, right now we've got an hour and two minutes into this race. Walker Fowler leading Cole Richards and Jared McClure, Hunter Hart and Devin Feehan in their own battle for fourth place as they try to claw their way into a podium position finish. Can Walker Fowler hang on to it and tie the record of 67 wins with Bill Balance? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues after this. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. 
stop by Lojack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lojacks.com. Yamaha YZs, it's why we ride. Hi, my name is Andrea Lee, the director of On Track School. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. Hi, my name is David Huff. I'm an AMSOIL independent dealer and we're here at the GNCC Burr Oak race, which is the second race here in uh, Millfield, Ohio. The first one was John Penton. And the last one we talked about the dirt bike oil, but I got something I'd like to talk about this time around. And that is our AMSOIL firearm lubricant right here. And our firearm cleaner right here now these two products are very unique they came out September the 1st 2016 and then uh, to my surprise they were totally odorless okay odorless and that's important for a deer hunter because when you're out there in the woods smell is everything when it comes to deer hunting okay now with that said my buck harvest started going up and then December the 3rd 2016 I laid a massive eight pointer down. And to my surprise, he didn't smell me. He looked right at my box blind and didn't even think twice about it and went right to the corn and right to the food plots. So, needless to say, I dropped him. And that was the best highlight of my deer hunting. And my buck harvest has dramatically been consistent year in and year out. The performance of this uh, cleaner and lube is none other cleans it fantastic, smooth shifting with my bolt action or my semi-automatic weapons, and no jams. Guarantee you, no jams if you clean it properly with our lubricant. I'm David Huff, and I'm an AMSOIL independent dealer with the Huff Oil Group, and peace out. And welcome back to GNCC Live and uh, David Huff and his wife Robin in as our AMSOIL representatives this week. Uh, Dave the avid hunter obviously an outdoorsman uh, showing that uh, gun oil from AMSOIL. I want to say thanks to AMSOIL too for being a part of our Moto Hero program. They offer up $250 gift certificates to our Moto Heroes. They can go through the catalog, get anything they want, swag or product, whatever the case may be, but uh, good to have them as a part of our GNCC live and uh, GNCC racing uh, action that takes place all throughout the East Coast here. And uh, if you take a look at it right now, unofficially right now, we still see Walker Fowler out front, Cole Richards in, in second, Jerry McClure in third, Hunter Hart in fourth, Devin Feehan up is now in fifth. Adam McGill is still sixth. Brandon Owens, seventh. He is leading the XC2 Pro-Am class. Josh Merritt, seventh in class, eighth overall. Austin Abney is uh, ninth uh, overall, eighth in class. John Glotta Jr. is uh, uh, tenth overall as well, ninth in the uh, XC1 Pro class. Just to give you a heads up on that one and uh, where we are uh, just past the halfway point basically right now an hour and seven minutes uh, almost an hour and eight minutes into this race we are nearing the completion of uh, uh, lap number three of what we anticipate will be a, a a five lap race we didn't see the two lap board whenever they came through last time unless something has changed 
Uh, I don't think they've slowed down any. If anything, I think, guys, that they probably sped up a little bit, to be honest with you. The lappers will balance that. Yeah, hey, here in the, the close, yeah, in the, in the next couple of laps, lap and a half, like you say, for sure. Uh, we'll see for sure, I think, out here in some of these uh, closing moments of this uh, uh, of this lap as we were looking there a moment ago at the eight mile marker we're down now uh, in uh, mile marker number four territory while we're uh, taking a quick look at that I always try to keep an eye on the the college a uh, we saw early on in this race Lane McCormick was actually leading that class uh, the college a and it's right now it's Steve Harrell who is leading that uh, College A class, 16 to 21 years old. Lane McCormick uh, running about 25 seconds behind him, and then Alex Simon in the third place position in that College A class. There's Alex Simon right now on screen. Yeah, look at that. What, what are the odds? What is the timing of that? <laughs> <laughs> you planned that out, didn't you, Chuck? Yeah, no, I wouldn't have recognized that. I don't know how Cody uh, <laughs> Collier is able to. Us racers know the race. Uh, yeah, 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 you yeah do. that's know. that's pretty cool. So uh, Alex Simon, it looks like he's he's a couple minutes back of that battle battle for, for the, the first two positions there, but nonetheless, that class is kind of the feeder class for the XC2, so we always try to keep an eye, eye on College A. Yeah. I saw that Cameron Eby jumped up uh, from that class today into the XC2. Oh, did he really? Yeah, yeah. he's in XC2 today. Uh, let's see where he's running. His his debut in that uh, XC2, it looks like Cameron Aby's inside the top ten. He's wow. sitting at eighth place, the number 888 Cameron Aby out of Union, South Carolina there, good home of Big Buck. So uh, good, good strong showing there in that XC2 class for his debut here at the uh, – the Burr Oaks GNCC. <laughs> I tried to say Big Buck again. That's where he's from. <laughs> no, I. I that, that's awesome. Congratulations to Cameron. You know, There's we, Cameron on screen now. <laughs> <laughs> love it, man. Love, love how things are working out. Uh, we couldn't script this any better. No, nope, no, nope, uh, good. Uh, I like having you in here. You're going to have to be a little more. God, God lays out the camera little shots a little bit better for us. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Chuck is our GNCC pastor and uh, hey a, a couple of uh, quick announcements chapel service is obviously coming up tonight non-denominational seven o'clock at team faith yep. and there is a pug and bulldog out near the road crossing that are ownerless right now a pug and bulldog if you are missing a pug and bulldog or a pug or a bulldog is that a brand of root beer <laughs> <laughs> pug and bulldog <laughs> that does sound like something that would be a, a cool name for a root beer or something but no it's not it's a uh, it's a couple dogs it's out an by actual dog it's okay. actual there's, dog. there's two dogs two out dogs. there that are lost hey looky there this guy right here back to the scene of the crime that is uh, Bryson Neal. Yeah, sure is. Bryson back nice with to us. to see him at the track. Yeah, it is. He's uh, hanging out in Walker's Pits. Uh, yeah, yeah, hanging out. <laughs> no, I think he's right now. I think he's in his spot next to Walker's Pits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, where's a wrench I can throw in here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So glad to have... Uh, Glad to have you. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for being out. Uh, and uh, uh, I heard that he was here, and I was like, I got to get over and talk to him. And then something else came up, and uh, I, I totally forgot all about. It. Look at him limping like he's hurt or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's, he's, I think he's just trying to milk it, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's got Frank the Tank here and everything. He's just about. He said, "Are you coming back this year? I, can you hear us? Are you?" A Cherbies and Mikey says DP uh -huh, breaks, of uh -huh. course. Yeah. Well, the only thing stopping him besides the knee injury would be those DP breaks. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that and an, an F-150, I guess. Good time, yeah. <laughs> I hate to laugh about that, but I am certainly glad. But that way, to, way to tie that all together. <laughs> <laughs> is that Walker on our screen there? No, no. no. This is, uh, these are this the is A not riders. four. Okay. Yeah, yeah good. waiting for. I Which believe. A rider is that, Cody? Oh, give me a second. <laughs> uh, we might be back to the B class by now, I think. That's Bet A rider, senior A rider. I'm sure of his name. I Is that Koontz there? No, no. That wasn't Koontz. I thought he was wearing that today. And I'm I'm kind of curious as far as the top overall. Where what are we looking at as top amateurs as far as the overall is concerned? I know that a lot of the time we've been seeing the. Um, it looks like Steve Harrell out of that yeah. College A class. Oh, wow. So that's 13th good. Place and then, so uh, fast in a few years, guys. Is that right? Yeah, Steve Harrell is there. And then uh, Jay Shadrun yeah. uh, dropped back to the Junior A class. Uh, Got to be 22 years old 
being that one. So uh, Jay's back there. I believe I overall. read. On screen now. There he is. I believe I read where Jay, is that Jay that's going to be coming back next year in the XC2 Pro-Am class possibly? That's not him? I read where somebody. I, he should definitely step up next year. I don't think they're going to let him run the Junior A class two years in a row. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Uh, especially after being a champ and former XC1 rider. I don't yeah. think he needs any But I, I, I think it's him, if I'm not mistaken. I think I read uh, someplace where he may be looking at actually stepping up to the XC2 Pro-Am class next year. You know, he's got a full-time job. He's been away for a while. And, heck, he still wants to be involved but don't want to train at the level it needs to train to be an XC1 rider. So I think it's pretty cool. Uh, we just saw Hunter Hart blast by there on screen. You see Jeff, his dad right there, had been hanging a pit board for him. You see a yellow shirt everywhere. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, Jeff's always wearing that yellow shirt. That guy, he knew, he. I think he's got like some like wormholes or something he travels through. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's everywhere. Awesome. All over the place, man. That guy knows the shortcuts everywhere from one point of the track to the other. Got the track map on his phone right now. <laughs> yeah, he probably does. All right, if I walk 200 yards this way and take a, a left, I'll be there in 2.2 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he's He's got it dialed, and he's, it doesn't hurt that he's in shape. He bicycles all the time, does a lot of mountain biking. And, yeah. And uh, he, he was running um, bikes at 10 a.m. on Sunday yeah. for a long time. He took this year off. He told me last week, he's like, I'm going to come back. Oh, yeah? I'm going to come back. Yeah, That's he awesome. Said, I, I want to I want to go racing. You, and now, you, you, you know that Hunter Hart was racing two wheels also a couple years ago. Yeah. And I, I raced with him a little bit in the youth, me and him banging some bars. Okay. And on the dirt bikes in youth, yeah. Yeah, kind of a common theme there. Walker Fowler did both uh, ATV and bike and had to make a decision one of these days. So we are right now uh, probably within a minute of the finish line, seeing uh, seeing exactly how far apart these guys are. It's been a close race. I mean, we're three laps going to about to have three laps complete now. And our what we can see on screen is that Walker hasn't really stepped it out. It's it's still within uh, you know 12, 15 seconds back there uh, of our top five riders. So interesting, but w this is the, the, the point, the juncture of the race where, you know, uh, you mentioned earlier about the endurance. We were talking about that. This is where you start to see, wow, look at that. Got a little squirrely. <laughs> that, uh, that, that's a gnarly, that's a kind of a gnarly hill climb right there. Yeah, yeah, I remember that from last year. That's, uh, that's, that's actually pretty fun, but it's probably more fun on two wheels than it is four because you, uh, you can get so easily pitched so. a, a weird direction. Yeah, but it looks like we got Walker uh, with Hunter passing uh, Cole there and then Feehan all over Cole. Wow. Right there on that up. So Hunter is on a mission right now, and uh, like, like we were saying, you know, but hey, this is the point in the race last time, too, that Hunter Hart started to make his steps up. And if this race is anything like what we saw uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, this could this this might be the interesting part of the race where you don't want to step away so you can uh, catch the uh, action as it unfolds Two before our will be out. Oh, yeah, five lapper. There it is. Vicky Fowler saying, go, go, go. Walker Fowler coming through, taking that, uh, taking that two-lap card, hammer down, charging off into the woods. Man. In second place, Hunter Hart. Hunter Hart, you called it. You called it. There's Hunter Hart. It looks like uh, Hunter Hart has taken over that second place position from Cole Richardson. Not only that, but he, he, Hunter Hart had to pass Jared McClure and Cole Richardson got himself into second place. He's about nine seconds behind of Walker Fowler right What's now. What's the lap times? I want to compare lap, lap times are 26-11 for Walker, 26-12 for Hunter Hart. Wow, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. I, what I, were I, they last lap? Do you have that? Oh, well, I don't have, well, they've already. Uh, it already right, right, They're right. a little bit slower. What, what they were in the 25s last time. I, yeah. the, that's all lappers. Yeah. That's yeah, all yeah, yeah, Their they, pace is picked up. The track they were 25-50s last time. So there, there is Walker going through right now. Now this, um, honestly, right now, Hunter is in a great position. He's he's working his way up through the pack. Like I said, you know, he started out last race in seventh place and was still able to come back and win. But look at what he's oh, doing right now. Oh, there's Feehan. I think Feehan just got Cole right you there. He he's, got there's Cole a line right up here, right outside of these rocks you can cut across. I seen Hunter take it last lap. So it's like Feehan may it work Big change. We may be Cole. looking at uh, Feehan and, and, and Hunter Feehan Hart back on the pod condition. podium again. And, hey, you know, they might track down Walker. We might see those three back on the podium again. we got a replay coming right now, a specialized rapid replay so we can pick up on that action with uh, the uh, pass coming through here. So let's uh, go through this one right There's here. There's Hunter. There's Cole. If you look here on the right side of the screen, you'll see uh, Feehan split. Yeah, I right there. I think he pinched him off. It's close. 
Mm. How the lines come together, you can't quite tell what that guy I can't there in tell. the black. We had the guy so in the black. Close. They hit though. <laughs> like John and Johnny uh, Junior and Walker last race. They uh, oh here we they go. Made, here they we definitely go. made contact right there. Oh, who? Now, I see. Oh, I see man. white chest protector. Yeah. yeah. Not, not yeah, yeah. I see close. white chest protector back here. So man, that was close. Wow. Though, what a line! Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you got to know it's line. there. Yeah, if you got to square that up and get a clean drive. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So uh, those guys are certainly going at it right now, and uh, everyone is hungry. And you know, I don't want to say there's a chink in the armor, but when you get a new winner like what we saw two weeks ago, it does kind of breathe fire and life into the rest of the guys. Another point to add to that is is that we are at the end of the season this is what they call silly season guys are trying to impress sponsors they're trying to to entertain new prospects and say look at me look how strong I am I'm going into the offseason I'm gonna be strong when we come back next year and they're trying to prove those points right now it looks like a little bit of a gap back to the number four now I uh, am yeah, McClure dropped off the pace a little bit whether it be a couple bad situations with lappers just splitting them differently and getting behind them in a single lane losing you can lose 10 15 seconds any given section to the wrong lapper on this track it's no passing out here. yeah mcgill's even gotten around him out there so mcgill up to the number five spot i didn't just even recognize him coming through yeah I, I didn't recognize that so uh approaching the hour and 20 minute mark uh two lap bar is out uh we just got underway with that so uh wow i mean there's still there's Abney right there. Yeah, with Austin. Merritt on them. Yep. Looks like they're doing a little swapping. Yep. A little bit of a. And that's, you know, at this point in the race, uh, you want to be right up on top of your competitor there. That's the. You want to be. Riding in no man land at this point <laughs> in the race. The track's being this rough. Right. It's no it is no fun. It is no fun. Yeah. yeah you you need a little you know, something to keep you focused. Yeah. And honestly, with them guys having as much. I bet they're just letting each other pass, just like letting. Uh, letting each other go around trying to make pace see what you're doing right while you're still on right you know, right, what right. It is. you're still all over me so I'm gonna let you by and see if I can latch onto your rear bumper and, and hang with you and and then uh, you know back and forth a little bit like that there's junior again yep Bowen's right there Bowen's hanging with Cloud. look at That's that he's awesome he's pace. yeah Bowen's way up running. to the uh, the top ten um, XC1, physically up to the top 10 XC1 guys, and that puts him in eighth place overall. When they came through timing and scoring, uh, Brandon Owens on that 246 Yamaha out of that XC2 class is uh, leading his class, but eighth place overall. Yeah. And now we see on screen that he's actually latched on. He's, he's, he's about, uh, yeah. about ninth place physically on the track. Well, I'm telling you, I, I've had several people tell me in the last few years, Brandon's the one is going to be one to watch, and and we, like I said, we've seen a lot of glimpses of greatness out of him, but he just can't back him up. Man, he's got like four wins already this he's season. Raw speed and talent when he puts it together, you know it's dominant. Yeah, he's, he's got so much raw speed and talent, whether it be mental, mental little, little silly mistakes on the track, and it's a mental game for him. It's he's almost young. like he has a, lots of time a to put it together. Yeah, it's almost kind of like very talented young man. Kind of like a Bryson Neal syndrome. Uh, just needs to really figure out when to push, when not to push, and how hard to push, and when not to push too hard, you know. Yeah. Or Cody Collier syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cody, yeah, you kind of that way too, I guess, a little bit, huh? Just bad luck, man. Just bad <laughs> luck. If I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Let's put well, it that way. Yeah. At, least, at least you got it. Well, it's just 2021. 2022 is coming up, man. <laughs> we'll keep our eye why, on you Why next does that year. scare me? <laughs> yeah, well, it probably should. <laughs> but you know what? I don't care what they say. We're GNCC racing, and this is uh, is great to be here. Well, All so right, we, we got the specialized rapid replay coming uh, up I here. I think we just got I a coverage so. of the y Yamaha live drone. We're still we're still reeling from. Yeah, We're still reeling the from the, uh, the the reprogramming and all the new equipment from the uh, flood that uh, we entailed down at Loretta Lynch. So. Yeah, you know, I didn't realize that, but this truck had been left there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, ATV. I realized that when I saw the overhead drone video, and I was like, oh, Lord, that's our TV trailer underwater. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, that was the least of it, in all yeah, honesty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, those folks are, are, are coming together. You know, I was looking online, uh, the Loretta Lynn's uh, Facebook page, Anthony Bruto runs that, who's the ranch manager and grandson of Loretta. They've got a big benefit concert coming up for the that area of Tennessee that's going to be coming up. Guys like Garth Brooks are going to be there. I mean, 
big, big names are going to be there. So uh, I'm not sure what the date on that's going to be, but I know that I'm getting a hold of Anthony and I'm going to secure my tickets because that's going to be a show that I'm going to want to see. Yeah, see for sure. I guess I need to jump on. I live about three hours, three and a half hours from there. So, well, I stopped up there uh, to see you at, yeah. at the the amateur motocross finals uh, just because, hey, I'm, I'm in the neighborhood. So we gotta <laughs> got to come by. So, yeah, that sounds like a concert to go to. Yeah. Yeah, sure. and, and it's for a great cause. Uh, I can imagine that the I, I I would think that the entertainers are doing it for free, and all the money are going to go. Uh, yeah, I, I love that they're all ba the country music artists. Yeah, are together and when support. you get the names like Garth That's Brooks and, and and I mean just Garth Brooks alone by itself is a, but I mean is a sellout is a sellout. But you, all the names I can't remember all the names that was with him, but it it it's just unreal the show that is going to take place. Mm -hmm. For that, as we I'll wait. go if Loretta sings "Cold Mountain Water." <laughs> I'll do you know, that. Would be an awesome man. It would, I, and I bet she probably will. Uh, I bet she probably. Alrighty, she's All looking right. good too. I, I saw, I saw some uh, photos. She's looking healthy. She's looking very good. healthy. Yep, ha happy to see that. I was wondering, uh, but uh, she's doing real good. So it's, good. A, it's a small, it's a small community. It is. And uh, spe speaking of, yeah. um, one of one of the ones that helped put it together, Davy Coombs, uh -huh. is out here on one of the cameras out here. Yeah, <laughs> that's camera. right. Davy Coombs, one of our fearless leaders uh, through Racer X Illustrated, the Outdoor Pro Motocross National Championship, and of course, uh, part of Racer TV and GNCC and uh, uh, Racer Productions. But yeah. Manning the finish line camera today. I think that's cool, man. I think that's he's, really cool. But he's always no, been no a job photographer. Small. Yeah, yeah, but he's always been a that's photographer. True. That's how the racing paper got started, which led to Racer X Illustrated, which basically led to what we see in American motocross and off-road racing today. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we talk a lot about Big Dave, but I, I think that Little Dave, Davey, has had a lot to do with it too. And absolutely, they'll be singing his praises in a few years whenever they look back at the history of it. There is our leaders back on point here. It looks like. Oh, and somebody knows he's about to get lapped. He just pulls out to the out to the side. That's uh, that that's Is what they're going to stop him again. No, they waved him on. No, they waved him on, but they, they did have a fuel can out there. Giving him the option. Yeah. I don't. Th th maybe they want to throw <laughs> another splash in if he's got this massive lead now. May as well to be safe. All right, got a word that uh, Devin Feehan now has caught up to Hunter Hart, and we've got a battle going on for that second place position. Uh, the gap was about 10 seconds back to uh, Hunter Hart. The gap is. There it is. Wow, there it is. There thought. it is all over him. That's awesome. Yeah, this and is, if this drone wants, to follow, drone wants to follow him, this is a nice field section. They can catch all this. is all open for about half a mile. They want to tag on so here. So that is Hart in the number two spot. Devin Feehan back in the number three position as they are approaching some lap traffic. Yep. This will be interesting as well. And Hunter Hart, you can tell he's riding with urgency. He knows what's ahead of him, and he knows what's behind him, too. Yeah. So he's kind of he's kind of the sandwich meat right now. Looks like they got by the lap rider. I think that was the same lighter that pulled over. Pulled him. off for Walker. Yep. He, got, he, he said he didn't want to be a part of that. No, no, <laughs> man. I, that's the worst thing in the afternoon is like, man, I do not want to get in the way of these paychecks here. <laughs> well, uh, Hunter now starting to stretch things out, but I mean, you can't really tell a whole lot. Just, I mean, just, just right there. Yeah, yeah, Walker's not that far ahead of these guys right now. I and I keep forgetting that. I mean, that's closer than the 10 seconds that we were looking at when they came through the finish line, guys. Oh, I think sure. this, we're we're closer to the five second mark here. There's Walker on top of the screen as these guys. I mean, we're we're talking like a three or four second. Yeah, five seconds at most right now. Let's count it down about four seconds. Square, a little over four seconds. Two, three, four. Right yeah, back. yeah, four seconds there, and, and Feehan's all over uh, the rear there of uh, Hunter Hart. So, man, exciting times out there. If you're here at the racetrack, uh, that's uh, this is the place that you want to be. We've got a race going on here. This is not a walk away. This is a race. It is. And how hard a time do you think Bryson Neal's having watched this uh, unfold right now? <laughs> I know he wants. I know to, he wants to be out there. He does, but uh, good to have him at the track, and good that we have the opportunity. Look at that! This is more than a half mile. I didn't track. know it was going to be this open in the trees right here. <laughs> I, just, I was saying until we got to the trees. See, yeah. that's what we talk about. We got great drone operators that uh, fly these things. So yeah, we're still picking it up. Uh, Hunter still keeping at bay the 406 of Devin Feehan, and man, I am super pumped for Devin. I know in talking to him through his uh, freshman and sophomore years, he 
he, he had such high expectations. And then uh, his third year in the pro class, he just kind of like this. I mean, it was just like he wasn't even there as a part of it, it seemed like sometimes. And then this year, it's just been such a totally different Devin Feehan. I mean, he, he has come back with a... Uh, a totally different outlook, and I don't know if the program's any different. What what has changed? But whatever it is, it's working. And you know, one of the things to uh, bring up a point is Devin was going to college, I think, during a, a good part of his uh, early part of his career too. So that might have been a little drawback for him. But uh, I'm thinking that he may be finished or close to finished now. So it's uh, giving him a little better opportunities to train. That'll, that'll definitely split your brain in two. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot to keep up with. I'm just glad that he had mind enough to uh, to further his education sure. like that, realizing that he's not going to be racing forever. Well, that's, I uh, think he will be, he just doesn't pay the bills. You <laughs> 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 don't need your day job. That, okay, okay. Good, very good point. You're going to yeah. race forever. Yeah. But uh, you, you just got to make sure you can afford it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, well, I tell you, we can't uh, we can't afford to miss what's going to happen next, folks. I'm telling you, this one's going to go right down to the wire. Walker Fowler, Hunter Hart, Cole Richardson, nearly nose to tail as they make their way around this fourth lap of racing. Will we see Hunter Hart put the challenge down on Walker Fowler? Can he take another win? What's going to happen? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues from the Borough GNCC after this. We are American motorcyclists. We are members of the American Motorcyclist Association. Racers, fans, and crew. We come together for this sport we love to race together, to grow together. We start young and not so young. We race motorcycles and ATVs. We become friends, we become family. We compete for weekend bragging rights and national championships. We make memories on the toughest off-road courses in the country and on the best motocross tracks in the world. Some of us aspire to the speed and poise of road racing or the fierce competitiveness of American flat track. And we honor our greatest champions in the AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame. Through it all, we cheer, we win, and we lose. We are racing. We are the AMA. Race with us. Be part of the greatest sport in the world. Be an American motorcyclist. Join us today at www.amajoy.com slash join hyphen now. Brown's RV Superstore is family owned and operated and stake their reputation on offering you the finest RVs available in their McBee, South Carolina RV dealership. Brown's RV Superstore carries motorhomes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, and toy haulers, and keep a huge inventory of new and used RVs in stock for you to choose from. They offer top dollar for your RV trade-in and help you get the RV financing you need. As a part of the GNCC family, Brown's RV Superstore, in partnership with Vengeance Toy Haulers, offers sponsorship packages for every level of racer with discounts and continued savings on your new toy hauler. Brown's RV Superstore has dedicated themselves to complete customer satisfaction, specializing in providing a positive start to your RV adventure. They look forward to customers coming back to share their tales from the road. Call Brown's RV Superstore today at 877-805-3658 or visit their website at brownsrvsuperstore.com, where family fun begins. This week in Yamaha history takes us back to September 2nd, 2007 to the Mountain Ridge GNCC in Somerset, Pennsylvania. Barry Hawk, Jimmy Jarrett, Garrett Edmondson, Josh Strang, Glenn Kearney, Paul Wibley, Jesse Robinson, Robbie Jinks, Jason Gilliland, Jason Raines, David Knight, D.R. Atwood, Brian Garahan, and even Charlie Mullins were the riders that we saw donning the starting line that day. Getting off to the early lead on the day was, of course, David Knight, who was in his first bid for a championship 
championship in GNCC racing that year. And of course, uh, seemed to hold on to a pretty healthy lead as the day went on. Through the first five laps of racing, it was all about David Knight while the rest of the field played chase. Barry Hawk, who had gotten off to a third place position start at the first lap, found himself around Jimmy Jarrett, who was the early second place position holder in that uh, lap and was able to make the pass on Jarrett to take over the number two position. As the race wore on, it looked as though the race day was going to belong all to David Knight. And after talking to a few riders and mechanics out during that day, they will tell you things changed very quickly. As you can see, the 101 of David Knight's bike began to smoke as it began to overheat. Barry Hawk got the pit board that his bike would not finish and to put the hammer down. Barry Hawk did just exactly that and took that Yamaha to the win that day and of course wrapped up that day in Yamaha history and his last ever GNCC win. That's this week in Yamaha history. What a great career. Yeah, no the, doubt, dude. And, switching and still being a bike champ. Very cool. Seven championships, a championship on the motorcycle for eight total championships. But that was a pretty neat. I, I remember that day I was talking with Doug Whitmer out there, Barry Hawks mechanic who works with uh, Barry and the guys over at uh, Coastal Racing Gas Gas team now. And he said, I remember, he says, oh, yeah, it's all coming back. He said, I remember smelling the how hot the David's bike was. I could smell the oil burning in it. He said, I immediately gave Barry a pit board. He had dropped almost two minutes back behind David Knight at that point, but he'd given him a pit board and said, Knight's bike will not make it. So Barry put the hammer down and, uh, it, and, and basically took that win that day. And, uh, and that's, the, that's the history of it. And, and the, I think the biggest part of that history is that was the last win, the 68th win that Barry Hawk was able to post. Yeah, and that got him his uh, first and only bike championship, correct? No, he got yeah. that in 2003. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, I remember being a multi-time yeah. quad champ. Yeah, he was a seven-time ATV champion in 1999. He retired and went to uh, only two wheels. In 2003, he won the uh, XC1 uh, uh, Pro o overall and, of course, was the, uh, the champion then. So, and then, of course, uh, a couple years later, we saw uh, Yuha Salmonen come out and then David Knight come out. And that's when, uh, but basically, you know, what was really cool, you look back on that day, September 2nd, 2007, one name is still on the racetrack with us, Josh Strang. We'll see him back out there tomorrow. Yeah, long career. Can you yep. see him out here doing it at that level? But he was long? a very young, he was a very young Walker Justin. There's Walker Fowler, like you said, on screen. Eight mile marker. We're, we're drawing nigh to the end of this one. Now, let's see what that gap is. If there is, uh, I couldn't see, but it don't look like those guys are nearly as close as what they were. But here's that lap traffic that we were talking about uh, so many times already. Hey, that was, that was Hunter Hart, and that was... Uh, Devin Feehan, so they are not far off the pace. Walker might have a seven second lead at most over second and third. And what a way to follow up a win for Hunter Hart. If he can't win the today, to be able to work his way up through the pack and into the, this position the way that he has is very impressive. And I have to say the same thing for Devin Feehan. And to see these riders to be able to do this consistently is, uh, you know, we talk about the switch being flipped and, you know, uh, the wall being broken down, whatever the case may be, whatever analogy you want to use. I think that we may have witnessed that at the last race. And we've kind of witnessed that chipping away for both Hunter and for Devin Feehan here in this 2021 season. And to see them prosper and to uh, come to fruition at the same time is pretty cool. And I think another cool thing, I, they're both New York riders. They race head to head. So this confidence that they've been building at the Nioa series obviously is translating into confidence now on the GNCC trail, especially after last round. It's also really cool because they race together so much at the local series that they, they know each other so well. They're able to bring that same level of intensity and their knowledge of each other uh, to this series. And uh, it's only going to make them faster. And that's what they got to do to hang on to that front number one plate guy, uh, Walker Fowler, who's not getting away from him today, but has still been controlling the race all day long they're running walker fowler's pace yeah and that's what walker wants yeah yeah and that's you know and that's i mean uh, walker likes to win and he wants he likes to win big he's even said that but walker will also tell you he likes a good race he likes sure. a good battle i mean and it especially if he comes out on top of it yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh you know yeah i mean it's nice 
to, to win the big races. But I think Walker looks at it the same. It's no fun to win big like that. You know, I mean, we don't. it's no fun for us to watch a race like well, that. Well, he's also um, the consummate uh, showman yeah. and, and sportsman. And so he knows how to put on a show for the for the fans and he knows what good racing is all about and uh he knows that this is good for the sport to not be a runaway although it's a little bit easier on him when it's a runaway <laughs> but um none, nonetheless you know he is in the position that his competitor was in uh seven years ago yeah uh, where he's he's the old guard mm -hmm. and he's got the young dogs chasing after him and he knows that right now he just has to control the race pace right and uh, so that's what he's doing and i don't know does he have more in the tank could he go faster if he had to go i mean is he saving it i i don't know we'll see we got two laps to actually we have a lap and a half to go <laughs> a little less than a lap and a half to go and um you know it's it's uh walker has has been so strong for so long he's fit he's mentally strong and that's what a big part of racing is we've seen the mental uh, strength come on as he's been building on these championships you know that first year that he lost the championship yeah. what well, could have been you know he's going through the pits and he's shaking his fist like i got this and then borch comes up and snakes it right at the very the end classic there. borch move oh right the, with the classic exactly the classic borch move and i but walker fowler used that as an opportunity that yeah. i'm going to build on this that's not going to happen anymore and his mental strength has been his strength uh, ever since uh, it, well even since before then because I remember in Georgia when he's pushing his four wheeler to the finish yeah. line yeah and, and uh, think about that I mean think about the history that that kid I mean yeah that's things that you don't even remember how bad people want it and just a highlight of that real quick is is that he ran out of fuel or the machine broke down what a half mile from the finish or yeah. so yeah and he pushed it and uh, he pushed it all, and he had an asthma attack in the middle he, of all that. Yeah. Middle, and when he, he just collapsed, he got it over the, the transponder line, and Ricky Tower said, that's good, and he just collapsed. Yep. That was it. That, yep. I mean, nothing but heart. And, and I think he was in position for either a top podium spot. Or it might have been his first win he was looking for. It was something crazy. It was, it was I don't recall either. It was a podium spot. I yeah. know that for sure, and it might have been a win. I, I think, think it was I think it was win. for a win, and he didn't end up getting the win that day. But there's the hero right there. Yep. I was going to uh, call him the devil, but anyway. Hero devil. <laughs> speaking of the devil, speaking of the hero, speaking of the devil. Yeah, you know, and, and this is so cool, man. It, the kid, he, Look, he there's the second, there's third. second and third right there, man. Still, Hunter Hart holding on to that second place position. Devin Feehan all over the rear wheel. And there was Papa there. He's made it to another final. <laughs> <laughs> there is, uh, is that Cole Richardson? I, I think that's Cole right there. So we should be seeing Adam McGill, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, checking in next as he's gotten around uh, Jared McClure or had and uh, a little further back is he sounds like uh, hey, yep hey yeah sounds like uh, we got Bryce and Neil standing by Chuck uh, is that where Cody went yeah we sent Cody Collier down there right. to the pits and there he is all right Cody what's going on with uh, with B Neil and Frank the Tank his quad <laughs> hey guys you can hear us pretty well over there Oh, yeah, you're yeah. good. All right, just making sure. Yeah, we're over here with Bryce Neal at Pro Row. Uh, he's had some time off with an injury after uh, trying to beat up the F-150. But uh, uh, here we are just uh, checking in. How, how's your uh, time off been? How you healing up? How's everything going? Uh, everything's been going good. You know, everything's routine. Um, I'm ahead of schedule my recovery. Uh, the knees, you know, I'm getting there. I'm super close. So I got about a month, month and a half tops. I'll be back when the bike riding. Um, you know, just coming out today, seeing everyone in the Gene CC family, uh, going down there to the starting line, you know, shaking hands, seeing everybody talking, the smiles, the hugs. You know, um, there's been a piece of me missing, you know, ever since we left this place last May at this racetrack at the John Penton. Uh, I've just been missing it all summer. Uh, I haven't been doing the normal, you know, me, Gene CC racing and racing in general. It's just uh, it becomes a part of your life, uh, a part of your soul. and. Uh, Whenever I was down there on the start line, they said 10 seconds, you know, it, it went through me, you know, because I, I'm always there with the guys. We're always there racing. And, uh, you know, GNCC, we're all a tight-knit family. Everyone knows everyone. And um, it definitely it was killing me today watching from the sidelines. But um, it looks like they're putting on a great race, and um, I'm doing everything I can to uh, get this knee good. Everything's going great, and um, I'm on track to be able to train all winter long and come back next year and uh, try to pick up right where we left off. So this is the first time you haven't been, uh, been to a race since the incident. So you, have, you haven't gone through that uh, 10 seconds feeling yet. So that's the yeah. first time you've had that. Yeah, today was the first day. You know, um, 
it, because the first two races, you know, I was on crutches and I was laid up and um, I was swollen and sore, but all summer long there's no racing going on and, and uh, the, this is my first one back today. And Yeah, there's a lot of emotions going on and uh, I've missed it. I miss everyone here. Um, I miss everyone back home, everyone who, you know, didn't make it out to this race, who I didn't get to see, you know. Can't wait to see everybody here soon and, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of emotions and uh, that's all I can really think about right now is just, I miss riding, I just miss it, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, man. Well, uh, you know, that would definitely be more exciting with you out there in the mix and uh, be happy to have you back next year. So, uh, yeah, hope everything goes well with your healing and uh, come back strong next year. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it and uh, talk to you guys soon and see you guys soon. Yeah, and you guys asked me to find Chris. Uh, he is off in the woods pointing lines for people, so he's not in the pits at the moment. Sorry. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot. Cody Collier as uh, Walker Fowler makes his way in for the final lap complete. Uh, a 26-11 last time around, 26-12 for Hunter Hart, a 26-36 this time around for Walker Fowler, a 26-38 for uh, Hunter Hart. Devin Feehan actually turned a 26-34. He was faster than both those riders. He was, and you saw on camera there that he was closed up to the rear wheel. Of course, he's been closed up to the rear wheel of Hunter Hart uh, since basically the beginning of that lap, but uh, the last lap he had actually checked in behind Cole Richardson, so this time this time around, he is legit running in third place. Cole Richardson back in fourth place. Uh, Cole Richardson running a 26:49, so a little bit off the pace there of those top three. But Devin Feehan was the was the fastest man on the track that lap. Well, I have to wonder uh, with a 12 second gap and and is hungry. Here it goes. Look at this Feehan trying to go. Not going to be able to make that. <laughs> he pass. tried it again. Tried though. it again. <laughs> hey, you can't blame the man for trying. I nope. mean, it, it could have worked out for him, but. Uh, uh, if he gets around Hunter Hart, I, I'm almost of the mind to think that Devin might have the speed to track Walker down. I don't know that he can get around him, but I think he, he might be able to surprise him and, and, and sneak one in on him there. Who knows? I mean, it's, it is the white flag lap. This is right. the last lap of racing, folks. So, I mean, anything can happen. It's GNCC racing. This is when all the pressure really culminates. The, uh, uh, the, the steam builds up, and everybody knows that it's on the line. It's time to go. Walker Fowler knows that he still needs to control the pace of this race. But, uh, man, a guy like Devin Feehan, who is so hungry, Hunter Hart coming off of that win, he's got, you know, that motivation, that confidence that's built within him. This is the last lap. He's wanting to run down Walker Fowler. Do it again. Do it straight up without Walker crashing. Right. I mean, he's within 12 seconds. He's within sight still. In some of these field sections, he'll be within sight of Walker yeah. Fowler, and he's getting pushed from behind. I think it's an exciting last lap of racing here. Oh, we've, we've got, definitely got the stage set for something huge as far as uh, our overall is concerned here today. Uh, as we know, we are on the verge of possible history with uh, uh, Walker Fowler tying uh, Bill Balance's 67 wins if he's able to uh, make that happen here today. Boy, I just remember back, uh, you know, Walker Fowler came off the XC2 season. He was the only rider to go 13 for 13 in the XC2 ranks. Um, man, could you ever beat these records that have been set by Bill Balance and, and uh, Chris Borich? And, I mean, at the time, his answer was, man, I can't see that far down the road. I mean, 67 wins? Who could do that? And, and here we are, a blink of an eye, basically. Yeah. And, uh, uh, just a few short seasons later, and he's he's knocking on the on the door of the history books. Well, put into perspective too that there are only 13 rounds a year, uh, in 67 wins in 10, 12 years. Or, that's a lot of wins. That is a lot of wins. That is is that even possible? Well, you wouldn't think so. You wouldn't, but and yet here we are. So uh, exciting things in store, possibly in store for Walker Fowler. Yep. If he can uh, keep it together this last lap, but Hunter Hart's hungry. Uh, Devin Feehan right there. Looks like Cole Richardson has been able to hold on to the fourth place position. Adam McGill back there in fifth. Jared McClure has now fallen into sixth. Josh Merritt's checked in in seventh. Austin Abney in eighth. And we should be seeing Brandon Owens check in any moment here on our live timing and scoring. And that still might put him in an eighth or maybe even seventh place position in the overall. We'll see where he's going to be in the standings, but uh, Brandon has really been riding a, 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 a rather flawless race so far today. Uh, let's see, Austin Abney is in, John Glotta Jr. is in, there's Brandon Owens, not in not yet. yet. He's dropped the 10th. Well, John Glotta just now checked in, So and, yep. and Brandon was right behind John at the end of three laps, so let's see, he should, <laughs> we're holding our breath here. 
He, he should be checking in any moment here if he's able to maintain the pace that he's been doing. His race pace has been a 27.05, I think. And uh, our leader's been doing, our XC1 leader's been doing 26 and a half, 26, 36. He checks in ninth place. Brandon Owens is in. Checks in. So he goes from eighth overall down to ninth overall. But he's still, that puts him ahead of John Glotta in the overall standings. So yeah. he's physically behind John, but actually ahead of John in uh, adjusted timing and scoring. All right, as far as top amateurs go today, Steve Harrell, the college. Continues. Yep, still the leading well, that college A class. Now Harrell. Or, or no, I'm sorry, Jay Shadron. Jay Shadron actually on that Junior A class yeah. got ahead in the overall yeah, ranking. Yeah, I see so, that now. So Jay Shadron would be our top amateur, but Steve Harrell continues to lead that uh, uh, college A class. Yeah, let's see what the deficit between Shadron, who had, well, they haven't checked in yet either, but uh, the elapsed time was one hour and 21 minutes and 46 seconds for Steve Harrell. He was... Uh, 122.26. So actually, man, Jay had put a big gap on time. Boy, adjustment. he sure did, didn't he? About 45 seconds nearly. Yeah, yeah. So, that's hard to overcome. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, so I, a number of things could uh, probably have caused that. Lap traffic, uh, mistakes, extended pit stops. Uh, you never know. I'm going to go with lap traffic. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Jay Shadron, as we said, you know, back out to the top in the front of the point as a top amateur here today and uh, then that's from the uh, junior a 22 plus class and Steve Harrell second overall in the uh, he's 14th in uh, the overall standings right now and then that would leave wow Lane McCormick up to the second place position in the college a class 17th place overall will be third fastest amateur on the day so far. And what's really cool about Lane, he's only 16 years old. Yeah. He just got his driver's license this and week. He, and he just moved up to, uh, I mean, it was this year he had to race youth racing earlier in the year. Yeah, he had to do uh, uh, or was that the, late, late? But yeah, they moved him up to the college class. I mean, he had to wait till he turned 16. Right, he had to turn 16, so he started out the season in that uh, two. Oh! oh. If you're watching on screen right there, you see why we were like, oh, that's... Uh, that fence post was really put into the ground. You know, that, that's, I think that's that, 212. That's Ricky Russell. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who that I is. Think that, I think that can go to show you, you know, how tired some of these guys might be getting. And as Cody Collier joins us back in here, and Chuck, you as a racer too might be able to answer this question. But, you know, traditionally we're used to seeing these guys say... Uh, the four-wheel guys, we traditionally see them do four laps. Two-wheel guys, six laps traditionally is what we see. When they add that fifth lap, when we add the uh, seventh lap onto a six-lap race, what kind of mindset does that, I mean, even though the length of the race doesn't technically change, does it feel like it changes mentally because of the amount of laps and you're not really basing it on time? Yeah, yeah, 100%. The amount of laps make the day feel longer even though it may not be just the oh, for sure. of it. And the, especially when you're doing six laps and you're doing that seventh lap, it gets a little bit not. It's <laughs> a little bit, you know. It's got its own challenges every lap and then of course changes every lap, but, you know. After, after that uh, sixth lap, you are you don't need, you don't want the seventh. Well, you see that guy right there on yeah, the screen? Yeah, Joel. Joel, Joel uh, is uh, one of our uh, uh, track workers, I guess. He, he actually takes care of all these banners. He, he puts all the banners up and helps drive, helps, helps hey, make they, everything. Hey, they might he, give Walker a splash of gas there here. There it is again. Yeah, I mean, what kind, I mean, I know that's one thing. They, they've they had issues with, here at John Penton with fuel. They don't want, I mean, I can remember Walker Fowler coming in, the spitting and sputtering, actually got bump started, it got hit and got just yeah, enough. Yeah, and he's got a 12 second gap at, at least at the finish line, he had a 12-second gap. So that's enough time to come in for a splash of gas. Mark's like, you may not want to, Walker, but, you but gotta, you're going to do it. <laughs> I, see, I see Joel, uh, that rider had punted that that uh, that stake right there, and Joel was right there to put it in. Just to give you an idea, when we were talking about pit stuff, that Tealy energy was cold. Yep, yep. Look at that. Yeah, look he does at that. In. He listens to his mechanic. Yep, and he's off and running. I mean, that was a splash. But look, that was uh, that was probably three-quarter gallon of fuel that he took on in those three seconds. Better be safe than sorry. That's all the more you really need to make sure you make it. But yeah, and he had 12 seconds. A full tank would cost eight seconds, and all he got was a quick splash. All right, there's a drink bottle for Hunter, and oh, he Mr. missed it, Titans. and he did not give up position, but he almost gave up position. Oh, look at this, man, wheel to wheel as they go around that corner. Devin Feehan is all over Hunter Hart there. 
Feehan wants that second place position in the worst way oh. right now. If I were Hunter, I wouldn't have even gone for the drink bottle. I mean, that's so <laughs> close. <laughs> Kudos for trying, but right. dude, you've got your hands full. That is a battle right there. Look at this. The drone is over top of uh, Hunter Hart and Devin Feehan, and Devin is, is relentless all over Hunter Hart. Well, I'll tell you, 17 minutes is what we anticipate these riders being in and around at the finish line for the checker flag here. So uh, as we roll through this final lap of racing, can these riders continue to ride at this pace and intensity right now? I mean, they have been very intense up to this point, but I think when they came through the finish line, they have intensified a little bit more even. I think so. I mean, Devin's riding with such urgency to it get is. around Hunter Hart, and Hunter Hart is riding with so much heart to hold on to that second place position. Meanwhile, Walker Fowler is out there doing what Walker does. He is winning a race, yep. and uh, I think he's I think he's doing it in style. He probably doesn't know what the battle is behind him, but he knows that there's a battle. And I tell you, Feehan is going for the pass. He is looking for Boy. that line. He's trying to he's trying to get in and under. It. Oh, he's getting creative with his lines he's now. Like I'm going to go outside. Yeah, the inside. Is. This inside cut's actually really nice. Yeah. Oh, oh he got the drive. Wow. I want to see a special. He side. set that up. Set that up. I want to see a specialized rapid replay on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. A beautifully executed pass. Devin Feehan cuts and squares off the turn, gets the drive going into the next turn, able to pass on the outside around Hunter Hart to take over the second place position. A flawlessly executed move. That was textbook. A college pays off, kids. <laughs> <laughs> it most certainly does. That was beautiful. But, uh, yeah, thanks to our Yamaha Live Drone for catching that action. Daniel Rogerson. And, of course, uh, man, what a uh, what a great uh, great uh, shot there for us. But man, uh, that puts Devin Feehan up in second place. Walker does. Fowler in first. And now we've got a half a lap left. Walker Fowler had a 12-second advantage. Feehan was running faster lap times than anybody. Does he have enough time to reel him in? What I think he does. Her? Bad lapper might be all it takes. That, that, as you would know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At my fair chance. And, and as Bryson Neal would know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody can relate to that one for well, sure. If you remember, he was leading, or uh, was close, at least at one point was close to the lead anyway, at the John Pinton GNCC whenever that all went down. So it's just. Uh, all right. Uh, here comes a replay, real quick, of that yep. textbook Check this out. pass. Amazing how it all uh, transposed. And we kind of saw it coming. We actually kind of saw it coming. As they come into this turn, watch how Brandon goes to that end. I mean, he literally clips the inside of that line. It squared and it, it off and just got that drive in the in the grass where the roots were still holding that dirt together. Yeah, Smart. Flatter there where the, all the dirt's being kicked there. It gets a little flatter. Yep. Well, we got a new second place right. Can he hang on to it? GNCC Live continues after this. Rocky Mountain ATV MC, retailer, distributor, manufacturer, product developer, parts tester. This is what we do, but who we are is something much simpler. We're riders like you. 100% employee owned and operated, a company built by riders entirely for riders. Rocky Mountain ATV MC, get ready.
Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets, sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We changed the industry by formulating the first API qualified 100% synthetic motor oil. The rest of the market has been trying to follow our lead ever since, but a head start is a head start. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a you know a good race here or you know, a good day during the week there, but overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Welcome back to GNCC Live on RacerTV.com from Millfield, Ohio. Sunday Creek Raceway for this 11th round of the Grand National Cross Country Championship. And a look back at 2020, our revival, the first revival of the Borough GNCCs. Here's the way things went down. Nice, sunshiny Sunday or Saturday afternoon here in southeastern Ohio. So Walker Fowler getting off to the early lead in this one. And, of course, uh, behind him, as always, the... Uh, uh, characters that are trying to uh, well, get him out of the way. One of those being, of course, that guy right there. Remember that. Now, that was Bryson Neal. He and Walker Fowler coming together there in a lap. Now, you see what happened here. But a lap later, he goes for the same exact move and is able to pull it off and actually make the pass on Walker Fowler. Uh, Jared McClure also having a, a stellar and uh, solid day of racing that day. But uh, Walker Fowler, <laughs> obviously, having his struggles throughout the course of the day as he was being picked on as he always was. He dropped <laughs> off to and, and was holding on to second place behind McClure who was on track to what looked like in the early part of the race, maybe win this battle and uh, here at Burr Oaks. But uh, man, these guys, and this is the, the next lap around and he passes both of them on that one move. He doesn't get one, he gets both and he takes over the lead. And at this particular point, Bryson Neal was man on a mission. Hunter Hart was uh, another rider that was showing glimpses of greatness on that day, but uh, it was all uh, the number two guy last year as we saw him make his way around and began, uh, actually I believe that was his second of three wins in a row. And uh, as we pick things back up out here today, Devin Feehan has caught up to Walker Fowler, That guys. answers my question, can Devin Feehan close that gap and no Hunter. And, and as I said, and no Hunter, good point. And as I pointed out at the, 
I thought that he could. I thought yeah, it was, going into it was the break, a you both said, yeah, I think he can do it. Well, here we are. We're at mile number eight, so we've got two and a half miles to go. This right here. Now, this right here will tell you the confidence, what kind of confidence Devin Feehan gained two weeks ago, what kind of confidence he's gained today getting around Hunter Hart and now tracking down Walker Fowler. You know that the confidence level has got to be soaring right now, so he's got to feel probably close to invincible. This could get exciting. It could get, plus he's got that feeling, that he's got that sense of urgency. He knows yeah. it's late in the white flag lap. He has caught the leader. This could be all that he needs. He's got to put the pressure on and go for the pass. Right. Right. Squinting our eyes here at the yeah. uh, at the TV, we're <laughs> trying to figure out. Okay, so seven right there. Yeah. It didn't look like Hunter going by there, but yeah, it looked like uh, Cole Richardson's got around Hunter Hart. Hunter made a mistake and dropped back, and McGill has caught Hunter. So looks Man. like Hunter dropped back to that four spot. So maybe. well, now Hunter Hunter had the pressure on him for an entire lap. Yeah. I mean, Devin Pian was just pushing, pushing, and, and pushing, I'm pushing. I'm sure that he probably what you were talking about. You feel confident in taking some of those chances sometimes in these soils and things of that nature. Earlier in the broadcast, he may have been in a situation where he felt comfortable enough to take some extra chances and trying to get back around Devin in that battle for second place, and that might be why we see yeah, him dropped off so much. It's really hard to give that up, and then you you end up just burning yourself when you should have just sat back and said, okay, better man today. You're going to take, you know, just calm down, salvage it. But, uh, man, that's so hard to do. You get in that position, it's like, i got to get it back, got to get it back. I'm better than him. And uh, next thing you know, you're back in fifth place. Well, I tell you, though, Cole Richardson, though, has really ridden a very smart race today. Uh, uh, even though we haven't seen him in the thick of the battle as much in the last couple of laps or so, he has not been far out of the reckoning. Uh, behind these guys in all honesty and uh, the point proven I think right now is he's taken over the number three spot. I think you make a good point there is he's been able to ride consistent all day long and he fell back a little bit there but that's just because uh, well Hunter for one came around him and was putting on a hard charge and now uh, you know for whatever reason uh, Cole Richardson, I think, is just riding nice and steady and doing what he's doing. He's and, a cold uh, it's train. It out. takes a little it while is. to get up to speed, man. He's carrying a lot of weight there. With <laughs> yeah. <that guy. laughs> yeah, but when it's rolling, it's, it's rolling. It's rolling. Once he gets rolling, it's rolling. Yep. And, uh, uh, I, and I wasn't referring to his weight in general. Oh, <laughs> right. Although Walker Fowler might make that comment. <laughs> I'll stir the pot a little bit. Yeah. He's called him fat before. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> to his face, though. I mean, but no, uh, but I, in, in, in no stretch of the imagination, Cole is not a fat person. No, he's actually really fat. But he is thick yeah. for an ATV racer. So... Uh, we got uh, that nine mile marker. We're waiting on these guys, and uh, and as I was saying, we, we're talking about podium. We're, we're not getting reprimanded for calling. But what I was saying, though, I mean, he is a thicker rider. Uh, he's got a lot of muscle mass and things, so his weight is a little bit different. And and you know, they've even laughed. He's joked around about it. You know, in the softer conditions, oftentimes, in, in the wetter conditions, he might have an advantage because he's got that little extra weight. Uh, oh yeah, you got to pick on uh, those guys. Got to give him a little cap for it, but. Look at the results. Exactly. Period. Look at the and, results. And, and, and honestly, I think he performs better at. I think that's this is a better fighting weight for him than when we see him at a tr slim trim Cole Richardson. To be honest with you. And again, he's not. And again, he's, not, he's, and again, him, he's not a big person. By but what we're saying is he's a little thicker for what most. Uh, but he's yeah, a lot of muscle to too. Yeah. Walker Power. Well, who's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, low, Thin guy, very thin guy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you look at you look at Price O'Neill. He's a big, thick guy, also. So you know, uh, but the, you know, he's a little slimmer, a little taller. Here's so. Walker and Feehan wow. all over him. Feehan. Wow, he has. He he's has come too far to give up now. He Feehan has. Is hungry. And, and with that being said, you you got to wonder what is Walker Fowler thinking right now? Here comes another one. Out, out of nowhere, I think he thought he was clear. I think I think he really did. It I has to be surprised. Yeah, he was clear, and then it turns around Feehan's right there, and yeah, now he's got now he's got to turn his attention behind him. Hopefully, he doesn't do it too much. Uh, he's multi-time champ. He's just fine mental-wise, but, but he's got a got, little pressure back there. He's got to worry about it now. But these are new people behind him, so you know that that it's it's not like having Bryson Neal, who you're used to having behind you, or, or in years past, Chris Borich or. Jared McClure, this is a guy that he's not used to being behind him. He don't know what to expect out of him. He doesn't know how he got to where he got to and why he's running so much faster today to be able to track him down like that. Yeah, uh, 
you just all Walker knows is that Devin's figured it out today, and he doesn't know how well he's figured it out. To how far <laughs> back he came from to catch him is what Walker's trying to figure out right now. Okay, we just what was that? Who was that right? Cole. Cole. Cole just came through after Hunter's drop back. So that's Cole in third place. There's Hunter in fourth. Uh, I believe that's Adam in the white helmet right there. Yep. yep. The lapper splitting him. Yep. Fifth Adam place. will give him a little rev bomb right here. Yeah. Adam, uh, yeah, our producer bringing up a good point. Good, solid race for Adam. Uh, you know, he's had, I mean, it seems like he's had pretty good, solid races going, and he's just had some misfortunes this year with mechanicals and, and just crazy things like that that's, that's been the misfortune. Otherwise, I think we'd see Adam in, in a more competitive uh, position as far as the top five and the point, overall point standings and maybe even battling for a top two, three position. Yeah, he's uh, we've, he's shown in the past time and time again. He has the speed for it. Just uh, it's 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 hard to put a full two hours yeah. together to have not having all the variables and details worked out right for you. It's, Come uh, on, man! You got thirteen races a year. You do nothing but train for this, and it's two hours a week. How can no, I'm just kidding? Yeah. It, isn't it amazing though the effort that it goes into for those two hours of time, and the number of things that can pop up to change everything for you. As our leaders check in at the FMF PowerPoint and ten mile marker, they're coming down to the finish There's line, only folks. A couple it, corners left. That's it's got nose it. to tail right now, and Devin. And Feehan is all over the rear grab bar of Walker Fowler when he pops out into the finish line. Chicanes, or they pop out. It's going to be a barn burner right to the checker flag. And I think that Devin Feehan will try to sneak a pass in in those chicanes. We saw him cutting those corners. We saw him shortening the, that racetrack up as much as possible. I believe he's going to try it again. I don't. There's, there's only five corners left after this shot right here. They just went by. They're... Unless Walker bobbles, I I don't know. This is this. Here we go. Like We're gonna in. find out. Is he gonna try to make that drive in there? Is he gonna force the issue? Is he gonna try to take the win from Walker Fowler as we hit the finish line? Chicanes in the final turns. And at the checker flag, it will be Walker Fowler taking win number 67, tying Bill Balance for second in the ATV overall ATV wins. And of course, with that, what a major accomplishment not only for him today but Devin Feehan finishing up in the second place position Devin's got to be completely stoked Walker's completely stoked right now what an amazing and great race day we just witnessed oh yeah oh yeah, Cody uh, Collier huge career, huge career day for Walker making that getting that win and uh just an awesome personal day for Feehan, getting that confidence going uh, amazing ride from that young man one step closer to his seventh GNCC title that right there uh, we'll tie Bill Ballant, or excuse me, we'll tie Barry Hawk in the ATV Championships. And this win number 67 puts him only eight wins away now from the 75 wins, the all-time wins of Chris Borch. So, man, we could see more records being broken in the next couple of years. Yeah, I'm pretty Walker's excited. Not out he's not done. Yet. He's, not out of, he's not near out of his prime. No, he's not, not at all. Be had. We still got a, a, a ways to go in the Walker Fowler era, I think. And uh, uh, I know that there's a lot of people coming in the gun. And uh, I know talking, you know, we saw uh, Bryson Neal down there with the uh, advancements of Hunter Hart and Devin Feehan in these last couple of races. And not just these last, this season. The, you can look back at the results. You'll see why I'm so up on these guys. And, uh, I mean, it's just, it, it only, to me, makes it exciting to know what we have to look forward to come not only two weeks from now when we head to the Buckwheat GNCC or even two weeks after that when we go to the Ironman GNCC, what 2022 holds. That's that's what I, I'm really vis envisioning right now is what the future holds next year um, because these guys are really gaining a lot of confidence. And, and this guy right here, uh, as much as he likes to see the competition, uh, knowing these guys are getting getting – getting that uh, uh, that edge he's only going to go back to the drawing board dig deeper he's going to come out uh, in 2022 he's going to bring something new to him now <laughs> the way they're celebrating right now love to see it did they did, did uh, that's it that's i'm big. trying to think did, did we clinch the championship here as well as win number 67 today uh, that's the question that we need to have answered i guess it's just i i know that the points are very close in, in him being able to do that did he just do it? He uh, did. Beer, beer shower seems like championship to me. But. <laughs> Walker Fowler celebrating with the race fans down there. Oh, yeah.
That is amazing. Look at that. Walker Fowler taking the uh, victory shower at the end of the race. Hunter Hart, a look of disappointment on his face. That right there, I like seeing that. He wants it. He's hungry. He, that means exactly. He's hungry. He's not satisfied. He know he knows he had more to give. He, he's going to. He's a great young man. I raced with him my whole life growing up. He's a, he's going to learn from. He does nothing but learn. It's not a it's not a mistake. It's something he can learn from. It's a learning experience for him. I tell you, when you see that look on a rider's face after coming, uh, you know, that right there tells you they're in their place. They're in the place that they need to be. There's no doubt. And uh, wow, I I mean the the future of GNCC ATV racing. We'll just say GNCC racing in general is epic right now. And, and and this ATV championship for the XC1 Pro Class is only going to heat up next year. I'm telling you, wow, ATV racing. I don't know that it's that. I mean, it's been good. It's been great over the years. With what's with the storm that's brewing right now, I got to wonder if next year might be the pinnacle of ATV racing and the best championship season ever. It's shaping up like it look, could look like that as one of the greatest champions of our time. Walker Fowler is down near the winner's circle right now and uh, Chuck LeMaster is uh, standing by. I think we're going to get a word in with him here in just a moment and uh, find out just what happened out there today in this uh, this big uh, Burr Oaks GNCC. As Walker Fowler brings on the, uh, is that, I believe that is the championship shirt he is. So not only did he break the record, but Walker Fowler just clinched his seventh GNCC title from what we're gathering here. So congratulations on two different levels today. Definitely deserved the, the champagne of beer showers that he received over there just a few moments ago. So, wow, we witnessed two big pages of history right here today. And again, Hunter Hart back in the in, in the background, still very, very frustrated. Let's head on down to the winner's circle. Talk with a big winner today, Walker Fowler. All right, Rod, now I'm down here with Walker Fowler. Walker, man, what an amazing race today. You were able to control the pace all day long. Tell me about it. Uh, just, uh, man, it was tough. Um, that, that red, or it's, it's Ohio red clay. It's different than Georgia. It's uh, stickier. It's heavy. Makes the bike uh, either have the best traction you've ever had in your world, or there's a reason they use it to build dirt tracks with for cars, because it is slicker than uh, than, than a booger. So, uh, man, got off to a killer hole shot. Just shout out to, uh, man, Moto Experts, webcams, and anti-gravity batteries. That's the secret to getting that thing fired up. And it just makes my life so much easier like you said I can, can control the pace and uh, you know I wanted to set a good pace early and man uh, I felt like I was riding above average for sure and uh, there were six seven guys all on a train that first uh, hour you know 45 minutes or so hour and uh, just fought a little bit of arm pump fought a little um, I don't know maybe not having enough confidence in myself knowing that you know the last race I had made a mistake midway through that pretty much cost me the day and just kept telling myself, you know, 90%, 90%, maybe 92% when you need to. Uh, it was a game of cat and mouse, man. Uh, <clears throat> there was places that um, that WFR Yamaha was faster, and, and I felt good, and there were places the other guys were just on rails. So, uh, man, that last lap, I uh, <clears throat> or last lap and a half, I uh, got into a really good groove, and I started to pull on everybody and uh, ended up <clears throat> smashing up tree bending the bumper all the heck and ended up right after that I hit a rock and it blew the foot peg off a little bit and I'm just like well this sucks <laughs> and uh, man Devin caught me and it was just a dog fight that last uh, seven miles I I look back and it, <clears throat> I didn't see yellow and I'm like man it's either either Hunter got really dirty or there's another Yamaha and I knew Cole was on his white bike and I'm like all right it's either Devin or Glotta and Glotta usually wears a weird helmet and I'm like man if that's Devin Feehan that is weird like and I mean, he was he was uh, all over me and, and, and using different lines. And I'm just like, man, I'm just gonna be so happy when this is over. And uh, <clears throat> I knew if I could hold him off with about three quarters of a mile to go, there wasn't anywhere to pass. And unless I made a mistake, and uh, man, I hit that point, and I was just like, all right, it just get to the top of the hill, get across the side here, don't hit any trees, don't do nothing stupid, bring it home for number seven, win number 67. We tie Bill Balance today in my home state of Ohio. A uh, bunch of friends and family here and a bunch of friends and family at home that couldn't make it either, but uh, Like it's always really cool to win these things, but it's also a huge relief But uh, it's, it's really it's really pleasant to be rewarded for all the hard work and the dedication and the long nights and the long days and It's uh, it's tough for sure. And uh, I'm so pumped right now. So thank you guys.
Fantastic, man. Well said, Walker. Congratulations on win 67 and number seven championship. Uh, we'll see you up there on the podium for more in-depth interview. But for now, back to you, Rodney. All right. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Congratulations, Walker. Really proud and happy for you, man. Just being able to watch this kid's career develop the way that it did. When I first, when he first came on the scene, uh, Walker Fowler was a two-wheel guy. And then they introduced the uh, youth ATV racing in about 2005 or so. He's the one that really made the push for that. And he's the one, him and his dad, uh, Danny, got, they're the ones that made the push and got that going. Well, I tell you, it, it certainly laid the groundwork and uh, paved a, an amazing path for Walker Fowler in the history books of GNCC racing. He wrote history in that first youth ATV race, winning that. And here all the way through his now seventh Grand National Cross Country Championship ATV cha uh, title. Just an amazing feat, and he's not done. <laughs> no, we're in the middle of his prime. 67 wins. He wants more wins. He wants more championships. But uh, like he said, you know, I mean, and, and remember what I remarked, that he would be surprised. Hey, that's Devin Feehan, and it would definitely get inside his head. You heard him talking about it. He was surprised. So, and, and with that, if Devin cons continues that consistency through the rest of this year and into next year, man, what will the 2022 championship bring us? We head down Devin to talk right to now. the guy right now, De Devin Feehan with Chuck LeMaster. All right, Rodney, yeah, down here with Devin Feehan. Devin, man, what a day for you. I mean, you didn't start out in second place. You had to work for it, and, and man, we saw an amazing pass out there. It, it got captured on film. You, you're you going to have to watch the replay. But for now, just take me through your race real quick. Yeah, it was. I uh, had to be patient with this one. Um, just had to keep the leaders in sight and uh, rode with Hunter all day, which was really fun. Uh, we kept it you know, nice and close, which is uh, exciting. So, uh, man, just super thankful to get up here again. Uh, a lot of hard work, so got to thank my family and all of the sponsors that helped make it happen. Well, congratulations to you, man. We're going to get some more inter interview time with you there on the podium, but for now, man, just want to throw it out to you and say congratulations. Job well done today here at the Burr Oak GNCC. Rodney, we'll send it back up to you there in the studio. All right, thanks a lot. Congratulations again. What a stellar ride performance. Uh, I mean, uh, wow. Uh, Devin Feehan uh, finally able to, to bring what he knew he could uh, so many years ago when he when he first started in the XC1 Pro class we were expecting these kind of things out of him and finally coming to fruition as uh, he captures that second place position tracking down Walker Fowler right on the rear grab bar he almost spoiled the 67th win for him right there yeah, almost had to push him back a couple more weeks yeah <laughs> but uh, nonetheless big like like Walker said a big weekend here for him here in his home state of Ohio uh, Cole Train Cole Richardson uh, we'll be talking with him next. Uh, very good race for him today. Very, uh, like I said, it was cold train uh, racing. Uh, took him a while to, to get up to speed. But wow, what a good consistent race. We saw him right there in that top five. Basically, the entire race finished up in fourth place. And uh, and, and I'm sure he would like to have gotten the win. Would have maybe preferred second place. But uh, knowing uh, Cole, uh, this third place position is a, a good one as well. And yeah. uh, with that, we'll head down with he and uh, Chuck LaMaster to talk a little bit about how his day unfolded and how he was able to capture the number three spot on the podium today. Yeah, Rodney, down here with uh, with Coltrane himself. Uh, he was just telling me a little bit about his race. Cole, man, just tell, tell the camera crew here exactly what you just told me. Oh, we, you know, we got off to a good start. You know, this bike's been firing really good. And, uh, you know, we felt really good running behind Walker there. He got me a little bit. I felt like we were both a little bit faster on different parts of the track. And then... Uh, I don't know what happened. Kind of started to lose rear brakes there. I you know, went to push him and nothing was there. And Hunter and uh, Devin were riding really well, caught up to me. And uh, just couldn't you know, get the bike pivoted on some lines there. And they got around me. And I just made a few mistakes. And then uh, kind of after I pitted, you know, I just tried to ride the rear brakes a little bit and see if they'd come back. They finally came back. And at that point, it was like, uh, I don't know how far back we were. But just kind of slowly and steadily reeled those guys in and uh, ended up here. Man, fantastic. I mean, that's a that's a hard day. Job well done. Congratulations. We'll see you up there on the podium. But for now, uh, appreciate your time. Yep, thank you. All right, Rodney, send it back to you there, and I'll be heading towards the podium. All right, he sounds good. Congratulations to Cole Train, Cole Richardson taking that third. Uh, Hunter Hart will finish up in fourth. Uh, Adam McGill rounding out the top five. Jerry McClure in sixth. Josh Merritt taking seventh. 
Austin Abney in the eighth place position. John Glotta Jr. is in the ninth place position, XC1 Pro Class, and tenth place in class was Greg Covert. However, Brandon Owens takes tenth place overall, winning the XC2 Pro Am class. Jay Shadron, eleventh overall, taking top honors in the uh, amateur overall as well. As we take a look at that Rocky Mountain ATV MC leaderboard there and uh, that's how it is but uh, man what a great day for Brandon Owens and that XC2 class got off to a blistering fast pace never look back well folks I'll tell you what we will be looking back when we come back tomorrow as uh, we'll be looking right back out here at the uh, Russell Family Farm for our continuation of the Burr Oak GNCC I want to say a special thanks to uh, Chuck LeMaster for stepping up and doing the things that he has done today and helping uh, cover uh, the uh, uh, absence of Mikey Waynes here with us this weekend has done a great job and also to Cody Collier uh, 4x4 pro class racer and also uh, color commentary here this afternoon and from all of us and on behalf of all of us I should say here at racertv.com I'm Rodney Tomlin saying have a great day everybody